Okay, hello everyone. I know we missed it last oh. season and you all fucking screamed for it last time. This is Power Ranking Season 5. <laughs> We're joined by Nick and Luke. And we've only got 12 teams to do this time, thank God, because if we'd have done it last season, we've had 24. So, yeah. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> I mean, that's I why think we there's didn't a do reason. Last year. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason we skipped it, right? Oh my God. <laughs> um, so we know how long these could take, so we're just going to jump straight into it. This is going to be like, it is pre-recorded, so I am going to chop stuff out. We'll try and get it to like, maybe, I'd, I'd say 30 minutes is a bit of a push. Maybe 45-ish. <laughs> I would but, say maybe an hour. <laughs> yeah, like, I think if we can aim for the hour mark, that's, that's like, digestible. And I think more than that, and it becomes a slug. <laughs> okay. In pick one, Obsidian Cleavers, tiny. Um, so, for the second draft in a row, I've been sniped on my initial S tier that I wanted. <laughs> Off the rip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, he ended up with Walking Wake, Volcarona, Glaceon, Bramblegast, Cloitzer, Copperaja, Hariyama, Sandslash, Kanto, and a Tornadus Incarnate with Water and Dragon. Now, I know Tiny kind of stuck to his own plan. He got sniped a lot because both me and Nick were also going for a semi-rain team. Yeah. And he, he wanted rain. But I think he picked okay. He picked okay. Obviously, his terror types are amazing. I'm a big fan of Dragon really? and a massive fan of Water. It changed my season in Season 4. Um, looking down the board, he's got... He really does need that weather setter. And I'm not like, sure what... He, yeah. Tornadus that, does it. Gonna be, it's going to be Tornadus. T Tornadus is the one, right? It can, it can set sun, it can set rain, and it does it at pranks the speed. So it's, it's great for with Walking Wake. I, I think overall, it's a really solid team. Like... Sure, you might want Torkoal or, you know, Politoed or something like that for initial weather setting. Um, but at Prankster Speed, I don't think you can be upset. And like Tornadus can do other things as well. So personally, I'd rather have that with the options that go alongside it compared to just a weather setter, which can sometimes be almost pigeonhole you a little bit. Yeah, yeah I, totally, um, I totally, I totally well, agree. Like, I was gonna say, like, really, like the trap. This the team that he put together is really solid, especially with all the mods he grabbed from his uh, his point system. You know, the fact that he was able to first pick Walking Rate Wake, and then I'm assuming it was actually his second pick. He went and grabbed Tornadus Incarnate. I mean, really, just really smart drafting overall because it does fit really well, like you said, with the fact that he can prank your sub the rain like that instantaneously. Um, the only the only the only things that we you can definitely have to worry about here is like. When that initial lead's gone, what do you have? But then you look and then you see Hariyama, Choice Specs Cloudser, whatever the heck Weirder is going to be trying to do, you know? Oh, Glace yeah. Glaceon and just general, like, you don't even, like, need a snow so that they can set its own snow and it's amazing. You already have vocal vocal runner with Tailwind and um, stuff like that. So, I mean, he's got so much extra stuff going on so that that initial duo of walking wake tornadoes is out there you can also set tailwind with tornadoes as well i mean that's really what tornadoes is here to do it's really just there's a support and then he's got a great supporting cast behind him so i mean he drafted really well on the shows i mean what i would say you, you mentioned the tailwind like you've got tornadoes volcarona and bramblegast all of them can set tailwind obviously bramblegast loves it because it gets its uh, wind rider attack boost so like this is a team that is more than happy in in tailwind but also when you look at pokemon like kaparaja and hariyama and then you realize you've got an intimidate using trick room setter in weird air like th it can go slow as well like if that if that's the if that's the trick that he wants to pull one week like i feel like he's, he's got a good spread of um typings and and some real tools at his disposal i i think this is, overall is a pretty good team I think so too, especially like Terra Water Volcarona in the rain with a Terra Blast is gonna do some things. It's gonna do some things. Yeah, um, for sure. Walking Wake, as me and Nick have discussed, because I wanted to team build around this, prefers, prefers the sun. So like the Proto Boost with Hydro Steam and Flamethrower, I think is a more viable set than Scald and um, just running Hydro Steam in the sun. In the rain, sorry, but yeah, I—I I mean, overall, I think I'd probably give this team uh, an eight. 
I'm leaning on an eight. There's some s small holes. Um, obviously, I haven't seen. We're not doing type charts this this time round. Um, but on paper, I think I'd give it a solid eight. It's got good good terror types, good synergy between all the picks. He did really well on the wheel pick, I think, after being sniped a million at one times by me and various other people. Yeah. Um, I mean, regarding the types, like, you, you're right, we don't have that up in front of us, but running through in my head, is there anything that I think he's particularly weak to? Short answer, no. Um, and I feel like an eight is actually fair. Like, it's, it's up there. Is it you know absolutely bonkers no but is it really good yeah and i i think eight is a perfectly fair score yeah um you know we're gonna sound like a broken record on this one for sure i mean it's a it's an eight i mean it's, there's it's, nothing as as better as it's it's a it's a really it's a very good team like it's not great it's not like 10 out of 10 but it's very very good which is right above where we're looking for like above us it's definitely above a seven I mean, I'm looking at the type chart right now. Only big point of weakness is a minus two to flying, which you got your terror types for that shit, and uh, you can counter that pretty easily. And so, yeah, I mean, there's no like holes right now. It's just about making sure that team synergy works in hopes that his strategy of, you know, going uh, rain versus sun, walking awake, plays out this season. Well done, Tiny. Yeah. Okay, so moving on to our second. Uh, victim. <laughs> the Vermilion <laughs> City Victinis also had a, I think, a rough draft for the fourth run in a row. <laughs> Seb just seems to make teams that everyone else wants. Um, yep. So, going down the list, we've got Moltres Galar, Sinister, Crocodile, Luxury. Pikachu is in mandatory picks. He then picked up Articuno, Golduck, Ninetales, Alola, Okie Dogie, and Slurking with Water and Ground. Um, Nick, you were team building or semi-team building with um, Seb, so you kind of knew what he was wanting from the rip. How did it go for him in terms of original plan compared to this? Um, I, I think it's it's probably more than 50% of what he wanted he got. Um, there was a lot of like ifs and maybes and uh, things that he could have picked up instead, for example, like Ninetales could have very easily been another uh, support Pokemon, which is essentially what he was picking up Ninetales for. I know, like the Alo the Aurora Veil vale is is huge here, and like the defense boost and things like that. But let's face it, Ninetales can also put out a decent amount of damage. It's it's got some great typing on there. Um, I think the Double Intimidate pickup. He was toying between the two and ultimately was just like, you know what, let's just go for both. But let's face it, double intimidate is not a bad thing. If you start cycling those, then you're, you're absolutely laughing. You can wreck somebody's damage output in no time flat while keeping yourself as healthy as can possibly be. And I mean, they're, they're two almost polar opposite typings there. So really good on that. Obviously, Sinister. This was what he most wanted to pick up and essentially build around. This was his go-to mon, and it's just because it's got all the tools going for it. Um, you know, obviously it's got Rage Powder. It's got its, I can't remember what the name Matcha of it gotcha. is now. Uh, yeah, Machigotcha and is it Hospitality? Is that the uh, Hospitality ability? Hospitality is the ability, yeah. So it ties in perfectly with the Galar. So the 25% yeah. regen boost, so you can pro multiple proc Berserk. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the Moltres Galar I know was not his initial plan, but it was definitely, it, it was his planned backup, and he was happy enough to get it, and I think overall there's there's so much damage output in this, that if there are any holes anywhere he's going to be able to be putting enough pressure on his opponents to almost like negate those holes that he, he may have picked up like Okie Dokie, that thing hits hard like, do not sleep on that at all. Luke, you've got the type chart in front of you. Is there any holes that you could see initially from the type chart? If you can grab that up um, while yeah, I yeah, just yeah. say that he's like, he, he, Seb does what Seb does. He gets first and second pick every year. So he's used to wheel picking. Um, again, good combos. It's it, You could just look down the list of good combos. So we've seen the Articuno Moltres Galar season two, Jack's team. Um, it also featured a Luxury as well, so they're taking big, big props from Jack. The Pikachu's Lightning Rod is going to be, and Fake Out is going to be a, a lot of a, 
an issue when coming up against this team, I think, for definitely for me. Um, Sinister gets Scold as well, just as a notable move. It, it Its moveset is absolutely brilliant, and yet we, we've seen it sort of in a couple of um, events. It's not done particularly well, um, but in, we Has all know not? I don't know the results, to be honest with you. I know uh, I people, people have been trying it out. Yeah, people see it as a massive threat. Obviously, we've spread, basically, Machigotcha is spread burn, so it's almost like an instant target as soon as it comes on the field. Mm. It's He's got the combos, he's got all the combos, so, like, Ninetales, Sloking, Golduck, Articuno, all there. Love the love the hail. Well, technically, it's not hail anymore, it's snow. Yeah. Um, all can pop Much blizzards better. off. It's just blizzard spam. That's what it is. He's got his own water terror to re resist forthcoming blizzard spam back. Um, and then Ground's just a really nice team, uh, terror type to have. We've noticed on mo pretty much all the teams this season, it's not Rock anymore that's a problem. It's Ground. And I don't know why, and I don't know what changed, because it's the same set of mons pretty much that we've had last time round, but everything seems to be weak to Ground this time round. But yeah, Luke, hit us with the type chart and a bit of analysis yeah. on that. Yeah, I mean, type chart, I mean, it's pretty clean. I mean, the only big one he's got, uh, he's got nothing more than a minus two, a minus two in Fairy, minus one in Rock, and minus one in Fire. Um, everything, I mean, his terror types pretty much fix all those issues as well. So, I mean, honestly, considering that, you know, he, you know, subs used to this now. He's used to getting screwed over in the middle of the draft. Um, but this time he's able to properly build around it and have his backups where they needed to be. Um, and then the biggest thing, I mean, I can see honestly is just team balance. Again, one of the biggest things that we talk about when we're drafting, how to have a good draft is to have a team that works well with each other right so you got your combos you got your type charts you know you have backups when things don't work out the way you need them to work out in the middle of the game that's why so many games went to game three last year is because a lot of our teams were very balanced and if they weren't balanced you weren't able to come back and bring it to a game three and that's what this team has it's got everything it needs to make it balanced it's got really great power the double intimidate is going to be a headache for sure when you start cycling it out um, we already know what Moltres Galar can do. I mean, we already know. I mean, yeah, it doesn't have Dynamax, but it doesn't need Dynamax at all. And on top of that, I mean, a beautiful job bouncing back by Seb. And um, I'm honestly really curious to see uh, this Okie Dogie. I've not seen it in action. Um, I'm looking forward to wait, waiting to see that till playoffs because this is a really good team. And I know it's going to get better, especially with these trades that we have coming in the, within the coming weeks as well. I will just jump in real quickly based on what you were saying there about the Moltres and does it still need Dynamax? Obviously, that's how it was being run when it was uh, particularly useful and, and, and good in the past seasons when we were back in Sword and Shield. I know it is still a great Pokemon, but I do feel like it has lost just, just a step um, in terms of how viable it is going to be to run. It's great. I'm, I'm not dissing Moltres Galar. Like, okay, nobody come at me about it's that. It's a worthy S tier. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, just it's not. Yeah. It's a shadow of its former self when it gets double One, health. Exactly. <laughs> That's the thing, right? Particularly when you're playing around with uh, abilities like Berserk, I feel like the, the Dynamax was hugely beneficial to it. So I do feel there's a, a slight, uh, slight loss of capabilities from it in that sense um still great and i do think it works with all the rest of his team well um but i i'm just gonna be curious and, and interested to see how that actually plays out because we haven't seen much of it in the uh, paldea format full stop or at least i certainly haven't yeah i think it's, it's still top 100 um but it's not too far overall I think this team is just like tinies uh, i think we're gonna have a lot of them this time around because there's only 12 of us with a lot of mons i think it's an eight I, I, you know what? I knew you were going to say that. And, like, I'm I'm on the exact same page. It's an 8. Is it a 10? No. Is it is it average? Like, a 5 is average, right? Is it anywhere near average? Absolutely not. It's definitely well above that. I feel 8 is a really solid place for this to be. I, I feel like... I, I don't know. I, I, I think it could be improved, but I'm not sure how. With, like... A single trade might take this up to a nine, right? But I think if the wrong trade is done, it could tank so, so easily. Like, it, it's in a very fragile thing with one thing supporting um, another. 
but no, I think as it currently stands, eight. And yeah, agreed with you, Jake. We're going to see a lot of this across the board. All of the coaches are very experienced and know what they're doing at this point. Yep, agree. Eight. <laughs> eight. <laughs> I, I will say for the future of this video, there there are better teams than this, and there are worse teams than this. It's just it just yes. so happens that. <laughs> It, it, it's probably around the wheel picks because you can kind of manipulate your team a bit better. Once we get into the middle yeah. of the draft, you'll see some plans coming apart. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. Saying that, for sure. Moving on, we have the Azalea Town Slowpokes. Now, wasn't present at the draft. Um, good old Nick took the joys of this one, double drafting. Um, ended up with Golden Go Corviknight, Raichu, Tauros, Kanto, Phalanx. Cerulege, Clodsire, Dust Noir, Salamence, Sneasel with Dragon and Fairy. Now, the first thing that points like sticks out to me in this is obviously the Terra types. The Terra types are amazing. Offensively, best two types in the game, I think, because the only thing that Dragon really is scared of is an immunity to Fairy and hits neutral down the board. So obviously having that access to Terra Blast is amazing. Fairy has always been the best offensive type since, God, since its introduction. Um, it was basically introduced to be that way. It was there uh, to counter the dragons that were just running rampage <laughs> on all of the um, all of the meta. Golden Go, I'm not a fan of it, but I understand how much damage it can do. Um, I think what stands out to me in this team just alone is I've seen it like from record, but just the resistances. Having two steel types on there and a dragon type, your resistances always look amazing you having intimidate on salam i mean salamon's changed my season last year when i swapped it in for backscout salamon's changed the whole dynamic of the team having something that is usable with intimidate that can oko stuff is unreal because you have no threat in sending it in other than like an ice type move um which you could obviously tear into fairy um but no, he's got Intimidate on Tauros as well, so he has got the pro like the, the chance of a double Intimidate. Cerulege is always a menace. Always a menace. That thing is just unreal. He's got Fake Out Pressure in Raichu and Sneasel. Dust Noir for Trick Room. Clodsire, I've I, I've seen it used once. It's toxic Stall, I suppose. And then Joel's just always been happy with Corviknight. There's always Iron Defense Body Press. Um, and then there's Power Trip and stuff. Because we do get a lot of setup this season. Oh, well, in this meta. So, Power Trip could be used, I suppose. But yeah, it's it's overall good team. Phalanx, it's always there. It's probably, it's got a good base stat total. It stands out every time, but I've never picked it in D tier. I know you had the rundown, Nick. I think it went pretty okay for him. What do you, what do you have to say for yourself for drafting this team? <laughs> right, so to, to give you, you context in terms of how this team was planned and i use that term incredibly loosely uh joel and i basically had a 20 minute conversation so at about 25 minutes before the draft is going to start i get a message off joel basically saying hey like i am having to be like on the move on the go and stuff like that plans have changed Ca is there somebody that can draft for me and i'm like yep sure like you know th this is we're here to help and he was at least giving us a heads up and stuff like that. And he wasn't trying to, because to be fair, if he'd have done nothing, then it would have been awkward. Um, a lot, lot worse for him and, and more awkward for us is where I'm going at. So we then had a 20 minute uh, phone call, basically, just giving a very brief outline of some months he would like and the idea behind it, which he was saying like, I, you know, he's very much prefers his defenses compared to his offenses, and I feel like this team does that really well. Um, types is a little awkward because I didn't know every single Pokemon that he wanted, so I was kind of trying to pick it up as we go. But as you mentioned, Jake, like the Terra types, Terra types we didn't discuss at all. So I was just like, let's just get some general good ones. Um, but he, he did get some of the tools he wanted. Corviknight, he, he loves Corviknight. And I think he knows how to use it better than most do. Um, he's got some real defense there in Dusk Noir. And Serilege, he used it last season as well. So he knows what he's doing with it. A lot of this is stuff that he, he knows how to handle. And he knows what does work on it. Um, I... I think it's never going to be perfect because of the fact that he wasn't handpicking it himself.
but I definitely think he's got some tools to work with here. And if there's, you know, a few trades he wants to make to, to fix up some stuff that he doesn't like, I think he can still end up with like a, a very him team, if that makes yeah. any kind of sense. And, and this is kind of more the focus I feel and the discussion surrounding this one. When you're not there, it's what do you get and how can you make it work for you as opposed to how good it is overall. Like, I feel that's an interesting uh, point to, to consider. But Luke, uh, obviously I'm a little bit, I suppose, biased on this. Do you have a slightly less biased opinion on it at all? I mean, I mean, with this one, the fact that you guys, I mean, this it could have turned out a, a lot worse than what it did. For sure. Um, no, I mean, really, the team flows really well together. I mean, there's just some, you know, I always say, like, we we Joel's been a part of the CCC now for four seasons. And, and I love the way Joel battles. And what I think, one thing I've learned the most about Joel is, while I may not agree with the mons he's picked and the team around it, Joel knows how to pilot Joel's team. And that, for the second I saw that Corvid Knight go off the board, I'm like, all right, well, here we go again. Because it's exactly it. It's just really just like we're at the point now where, yeah, these power rankings are great, but we also know the people who are piloting these teams who can make these teams work. I mean, type chart wise, I mean, it's solid. I mean, you got a couple, you got, you got, yeah, he's got a minus one to ghost, uh, dark, water, fire, but that all pretty much cancels out with his Terra's, you know, minus two to poison. But I mean, everything here, I mean, the best thing about Terra's is now like they kind of, it's almost like you throw the type chart out kind of out the window almost because you can always cover for your weakness if you pick the right Terra types. Um, I mean, I guess I just, the only problems I really have with the team, again, it's just like certain mons that he shows. Like I'm not a big fan of D Dusk Noir. I've never really been a big fan of Dusk Noir. Um, obviously Phalanx is there. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, we can definitely, the shenanigans can be had with the Tauros, you know, for sure. Angular Port and Tauros, you already got Intimidate on it. Um, I don't, is Raichu basically the same from last year? Last year, uh, uh, from, yeah, uh, only thing it doesn't get is Sword and Shield. Yeah, okay, no yeah, follow me, just, but other than yeah, that. Doesn't have, yeah, okay, so it's still the same thing. So, I mean, besides Minus Follow Me, I mean, that's, I mean, it's a solid mod. I mean, like, it's a good team. I mean, it definitely, considering that he was not there and you guys had 20 minutes to discuss it, all these mods are really solid. You can definitely do things with a lot of these mods. It definitely, definitely lacks the team synergy that the first team, two teams had, for sure. But uh, again, it's just something where, you know, might take Joel a week week or two to figure it out make some trades to get some more team synergy in there but overall the team looks great type chart is great and obviously good job to you nick for piloting this draft for him and you saved him with the terrace for sure um, yeah, if you I, get, if, I, yeah yeah if you didn't get these terrace the team would kind of be falling apart right now but the terrace were a I big will say up. Real quickly, the three that you have picked up, picked out there, Phalanx, Cloudsire, Dust Noir, which you said, I'm not sure about those. Joel never mentioned those once. So like that, <laughs> okay. that was entirely <laughs> okay. off me. Like okay. we, we, we did, I did not have like a list of 10 to work from. I had a general idea of what he wanted to build. Yeah. Um, and as I say, like he was mentioning more towards like the defensive side and stuff, which is mm -hmm. why I've gone for for these type of Pokemon. Like uh, these give him what I call tricksy tools, basically. Yeah, and he definitely did that, Nick. I mean, all both defensive is a uh, team uh, base stat, eighty six in defense, eighty eight special defense. You did your job, and they hit, it hits hard like a truck. Ninety seven base attack, so. Yeah. yeah. You know. uh, for the record, Joel did speak to me afterwards and was like, "Yeah, hey, you 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 smashed it for me. Very happy with this." So, I I know he's not upset in the slightest. Yeah. Um, saying that, going to scores, I might, I might be a bit controversial on this, but like, given that Luke said it, he took the words out of my mouth. The lack of a bit of team synergy in this, not sure how it's going to link. I'm giving it a six point five. Um. Okay. Well, I, I suppose because I built it, like I won't, I won't give a score for my own. In fact, I probably could because uh, I'm not necessarily a super fan of its spoilers. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, usually uh, we dash like, you if it's your own team. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But this isn't my team. Yeah. But I, I picked it, so I will give a score. Um, I feel six point five may be a little harsh in my opinion, but it, it's not quite of the same synergies as before. And, and, and to be fair, in my head, I can kind of see strats that he can do with it. So I'll, I'll go a little heavier, uh, higher, and say uh, I'm torn between a seven and a seven point five. Um, 
I, I know I'm biased, so I'll go seven just to um, nice. <laughs> j j just just to not be uh, try and unbias myself. <laughs> Yeah, um, I agree with you, Nick. I definitely think it's still a really good team. While the team synergy is lacking, it's just more of a sense of if you did not get the Terra types that you got, I would probably knock this down to a six easily. But the Terra types saved this team. Um, and overall, while the team synergy is important, you can definitely work around that. So I definitely think a seven is a solid, is a, is a fair and honest score. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so I believe <laughs> next we hope have up the serial offender, Kanto, runner, runner up for last, uh, <laughs> Mr. <season> Sleeping. And... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, Kanto turned up late. Um, no fault of his, well, a little bit of fault of his own, just different. Yeah, it's all of his own. He all knew honest. the times. <laughs> Uh, just time zones are a killer man we've all been victim victim to them at some point um yeah. so i believe his first five were picked for no first four from d up um and, and then we picked a terror. terror type so sunken palosan was a cipher so he then got to trade that out he had a free trade before week one made available to him if he wished to try and fix something that was automatically given to him because he was late. So he switched we to nice. Cypher for Palisand. He got a Bronzong given to him and he got a Decidueye Hisui and a Grass type Terror. Then he came in and he basically went, he tried Iron Hands. Um, <laughs> uh, Brooksish, Dashbun, Fungus, Vaporeon and a Dark Terror. Um, now, obviously, this team on paper doesn't look brilliant. Um, it's very, very, very heavy into Trick Room, I believe. It's one of two teams this season that have gone hardcore Trick Room. Um, but he's got the tools to use it. I, we've seen from Kanto before, he's a massive VGC player. Came second last season. For season three went on a run until he met Josh. Um, but Josh's team in season three was absolutely bonkers. Um, yeah, well, I mean, he won the whole thing, right? So the yeah, he, yeah. he, he, he lost to the champion the that season, but, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, massive VGC player. So we know he's going to be able to pilot Heatran and Iron Hands to perfection. I've never seen Decidueye Hisui in, in in VGC or being used, but Grass Fighting is not a bad typing to have with Triple Arrows. I think got buffed into this game. It's signature move. So it's definitely worth using. Bronzong has got dropped into B tier this season from A tier. It's been A tier for four seasons. This time got dropped and finally got picked, but only because of a randomizer. Not going to lie. <laughs> um, so I think that, that's the reason we dropped it, right? It was just yes. sheer lack of usage, basically. Yeah, and and so that's how we pointed to it being in the wrong tier. Um, Dashbun, I'm a big fan of. Um, Aroma Veil will allow him to get the trick room off. Iron Defense, Body Press, Fairy Type, Player Rough, um, Resist, full on immunity to fire as well, which is amazing with Grass Type Terror. Well, it's, it's only if he's going to not run the a realm realm realm. He's going to run well, yeah. well big body. Um, Dark Terror comes into good use on Fungus, uh, avoids those pranks to taunts, gets allows you to get um, Rage Powders off and Spores. Vaporeon, nice, I suppose. But yeah, it obviously lacks a lot of synergy. It's just he he had effectively six slots to build from. To be honest, though, I think the randomizer was quite nice to him. <laughs> he could have got a lot worse. And I was giving him the, the essentially free trade to, to fix it. Um, I don't think this is bad at all. Um, it, it's certainly not my favorite team of the ones we've spoken about. But I think that with Kanto as the pilot of this, this is going to definitely make some people come unstuck, right? He, he is going to potentially wipe the floor with some opponents because I think that this in certain situations is going to be almost un uncounterable. Like, because it is so hardcore trick room, it's just good at what it does it's like it has a purpose and it's going to fulfill that purpose it's not like it's being wishy-washy trying to do more than one thing um i think kanto is also like he, he's got tools here that he can run it outside of trick room it doesn't want to be outside of trick room let's make this clear 
Uh, but there's like particularly with say iron hands which i mean you see it in vgc all the time like that thing doesn't need to be in trick room at all it's just an absolute menace and, and that alongside pokemon such as dashman as you were talking about jake I, I think he can definitely do stuff without needing the trick room but if he can get it off and he's got more than enough uh chance to do it um he, he's gonna absolutely tear some people apart i i do genuinely wonder whether he came in looked at the team he'd got and went oh okay i can make trick room work out of this which is not what i'd have done i knew, i know there's bronze on there but you know he had the Citroen Hisui and uh scyther to begin with and it's like my mind doesn't go to trick room so i'm i'm curious whether he decided in the moment to go that way or whether that was his plan for all along um either way it because it's lacking some of the picks the synergy isn't quite there as we saw uh, earlier on, but it's still it's still solid and oh, it's it's Kanto, you know, like the the pilot makes a huge huge impact in this. Um, so I'm going to be really interested to see what he does with it, and more importantly, what trades he makes to shore this thing up, because I think that's something worth bearing in mind. And I know I've touched on trades on and some of the other ones as well, but I think they're even more crucial in this one specifically because of the fact that half the picks weren't his own so the moment he gets to a couple of trades in here this thing is going to be a whole different machine you know yeah i mean totally i mean you look at this team and if this was before season one canto um we would break this team over the course let's be let's be completely honest um, let's be completely honest. We would. And that being said, I mean, it's just, it is what it is. I mean, again, Cancer didn't pick four of these mods and this tarot type, but he may, may deal with what he had and you can't go wrong with Heatran Iron. You just, you just, you just can't. It's, 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 it's a great combo. Iron is a great mon and leave it to the VGC player to pick one of the best Pokemon in VGC, hands down, right now. Um, and he knows how to use them. He's, he's played, a, played a million of them. He knows how to use them. He knows what they're good against. He knows what they're weak against. He knows how to pilot that mod. Um, again, Team Synergy is just going to be the biggest question. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, rack over the type chart. The type chart's a freaking mess. Um, <laughs> you know, his, his, ter his terror types didn't really help him at all when it came to his type chart. It definitely helped with the Fungus and definitely helped out with some, showing up some of those grass types he's got going on, but it definitely isn't doing him any solids. Um, but I mean, overall, I mean, I don't want to rag on it. I like some of the mods on here. I mean, obviously, I want to see the sun current come once. I have to, um, before he trades it out. <laughs> Solar power sun current. I want it. I want it so bad. Um, I mean, yeah, some of these mods they just don't they just don't synergize well with one another or with the team. It really just looks like it's gonna be heat train iron hands and then some other mods thrown in here, here and there to round out the team, the trick room. You know, it does scream Trick Room. I mean, his base speed stat for his entire team is 54. If that's not screams tri Trick Room, that's Trick Room. So how you stop Trick Room, don't let it happen, you know? Um, but, I mean, overall, I mean, I, I feel like that being said, again, it's Kanto. I'm not – I think Kanto is going to make this team work. Then we'll definitely be seeing the Golden Goes in the playoffs, no question. And, um, you know, but team-wise, I would just say I, I would just give it a five. That's what I'm giving it. That's what this team is. It's a five. Okay. <laughs> yep. Yep. I can see it. I, I, I'm, I'm with you, Luke, on this one. It's just, it's a bang average. It's a five. It's not picked by him, which is the unfortunate thing. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely think with two, two trades left, two weeks yeah, left. Yeah. It, it, the question is, can he get out of the two weeks? Because we've only got five games this season and it's got to be rough. So if your first two weeks don't go with you, you are on the ropes. Like if you lose three, I think you're out. Oh, yeah. I, it's, it, it's not quite like we, we have run the numbers and like in a very weird world <laughs> where it's it's incredibly one-sided, you can even get through on one win, but you, you, ultimately you need two. And I don't think losing the first two games means you, you're down and out. Obviously you're on the ropes, but um, no, I, I think he can 100% struggle to begin with and then catch up but i don't even think he's going to struggle so i i don't think this is 
as polished as the rest of the teams for obvious reasons as we've already discussed but i i'd put it a little above average personally i'd go a six um and that's purely because it's it's dialing into one particular um Suppose like if you don't feature have a for trick right room, exactly don't... yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the thing like it's 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 closer to a five than a six, but I don't want to go 5.5. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I'm sticking with six. Cool. Um, nice. So five, five, six. All right, next up is uh, Pembroke Palafins. Um, Phoenix always drafts well, and this year was no difference. Um, Ursulon or Blood Moon, <laughs> Clefairy, Articuno Galar, Illamise, Electrode, Pasculesian Male, Breloom. King Gambit, Salazzo, Slowbro with Grass and Poison type uh, Terrors. Now, I've got a feeling like Phoenix might have been sniped on one of his Terrors. I don't think... Uh, well, Poison goes quite nicely. I'm a big fan of the Poison type, but I, I, someone might be able to point out what, what I'm missing with the Grass type. Obviously, it's got synergy with Breloom. I suppose it covers for Basque Legion's typing, and I, I'm not sure what the Ursa Luna's typing is. Um... Uh, but, it is ground normal, same as normal, Ursulina. Or, or maybe like a Grass Terror King Gambit. Phoenix will have seen something in this team that... Because he picked his Terror type fairly early on, so he'll have known what what he wanted, whether it's just like he wants to spam Earthquake with Ursulina and the Grass type will resist it on the other side, which is just fine. Um, first time we're using Clefairy this uh, in, I think, pretty much every season. I don't think it's been picked. No. Uh, I don't think it had much viability in Dynamax because of, obviously, OP Dynamax powers. Um, but this season probably will see some absolute absolute annoyance of usage. Ascuna Galar, we all know, gets Trick Room with Tailwind, doesn't need anything else really saying about it. Freezing Glare's amazing. Illamise, the bloody air mattress, the the two extra pranks of Tailwind users that came in. Um, I don't and... know how you see this as an air mattress. I'm sorry, I know I'm interrupting you. I like, I know you call it that. I don't see it. Carry it's on. like an air mattress. Yeah. I, I, see <laughs> I see it. I see it. Um, but yeah, it gets all the pranks to stuff. T-Wave, uh, some other crap. Screens, it, it's there for that reason. Electrode, a massive fan of Electrode in D-Tier. 150 base speed, does get T-Wave, gets a lot of um, speed control on that bad boy. Plus Explosion which is really nice. Uh, Basque Legion Male. Now, this is the one that confused me. Obviously, he's got... I think he's got pranks to weather on Elamise. That's what I'm thinking, right? Um, I believe it's I got believe Rain so, Dance. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah, probably where the sure. Grass Terror comes in. That's probably where the Grass Terror comes in, in terms of in, in the rain. I mean, Grass Terror Breloom with Loaded Dice is going to be amazing. King Gambit, I can never make work personally. I know the Sucker Punch is always doing a lot of damage. I just... I always struggle using it, so I was going to pick it this season, but I couldn't. Salazzle, I'm a massive fan of. It gives him his fake out, because I believe that the rest of it didn't have it. Um, and a massive special attack. Plus fairy might. Ooh, okay, maybe. And then Slowbro just fixes everything. If in doubt, stick a Slowbro in it. Um, overall, I really like this team, but I'll let Nick do a bit of a deep diving on this. He probably, you might know more than me, because you've used a couple of these mods, right? Especially like a Breloom. Uh, yeah, I have. So... I, I'm really torn about this team. Really torn. I I look at this and I can go, okay, this is this has the potential to do some gnarly stuff. First of all, yeah, Basque Legion in the rain. Um, Articuno can do both Trick Room and Tailwind, and I think there's definitely going to be some heavy Trick Room use on this team as well, although it's not reliant on it. Um, you mentioned King Gambit. Again, going to love that Trick Room. Uh, also, a lot of people love bringing an Intimidate user, which King Gambit's always great for. That said, like I, I love the individual Mons, mostly. Um, I see the synergy, but for some reason, my brain is looking at this going, I wouldn't want to run it. And, and this is, I, I don't know why, like I can't put it into words. And I realize this is terrible when I'm trying to give an analysis or something <laughs> to say, I can't tell you why. I, I, I just feel like it's going to be maybe a little bit awkward. And I think that in particular, 
while he's got some bulky Pokemon, such as uh, Saluna and Slowbro, I feel like the bulk isn't quite a as good as it could be. And and obviously, Clefairy shores that up a bit. Maybe, maybe I'm jumping the gun a bit. Maybe I'm jumping the gun. Um, I do think that the Grass and Poison Terror types, they're good, but they're not the greatest for this team. It's, it's weird. I... It's not a bad team. It's not a bad team. I just don't know how I'd run it. And I think that's the difficulty. That said, because of that fact, I think there's definitely going to be a surprise factor here of him potentially coming out and absolutely blindsiding some people. Uh, because I'd look at this and go, well, I don't know what's coming. Am I expecting Trick Room? Am I expecting Rain? Am I expecting just pure power with like support mons next to it? Uh, he, he can go a lot of different ways. Um, it, it's not as focused as we've seen some of the other ones. Like, you go back to Tiny and it's like, yeah, he, he knows what he wants to be doing. But in this particular instance, I feel like because it's spread out a bit, it's a little difficult to run. But to be fair, if there's anyone that can run a difficult, like a hard to use team, it's Phoenix. Phoenix, <laughs> like he knows what he's doing. He's incredibly experienced at the drafts. He's done a fair few of them. He takes part in ones outside of obviously ours. Um, so yeah, I, I'm gonna hold my breath before I say anything bad about this. I, I do think it's got a lot of potential. I'm just not sure what it is. Yeah, um, here's the thing. I don't know what the heck to make of this team. Um, That's it. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> like it's again. I think it might just come back down to I'm not very well versed in some like a lot of these mons. Like I know Ursula of Blood Moon is like this big old scary looking monster thing that does a lot of damage and it's crazy. Bastion Legion's a big basculin. You know I don't know what the hell it does, but I don't want to go up against it. And, and you know King Gambit's there to sucker punch me to death. Um. Like, I mean, like, overall, I mean, it's the type chart, it's lovely, lovely. Like, it's, I mean, it looks good. There's not a glaring weak. The thing is, there's no glaring weakness on this team. And then, honestly, there's kind of hard to find weaknesses, honestly. I think glaring's a, a poor choice of words. There's no, like, straight up, like, how do you beat this team? Because I think this team can do so many different things each and every week. With Phoenix piloting it, it's gonna be very hard for any opponent to really buckle down and figure out what he wants to do because there's so many options. And I think that's the best thing about this team. There's so many options that you can do with this team. There's no one way thing that you, that Phoenix is gonna do every week. That being said, of the mods that I do know a little bit about, I'm not the biggest fan of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, like, I'm not the biggest fan of Electrode. I. The air matches, it's, we just saw it get stomped. Um, Clefairy's cool. Don't get me wrong, I'm really excited to see it, but I also think there's a reason why it wasn't picked up, even though it wasn't Dynamax format, but we did run dy non-Dynamax one one year and it didn't get used either, and there's probably a reason for it as well. Um, Slowbro's great. I, I mean, Slowbro's a great utility pick. I love the Slowbro pick. Um, Jake's used to Lazzle to perfection before. I personally don't think it's great. I think it's pretty okay. Um, Breloom, again, it's just too many weaknesses on Breloom for me to really love Breloom either. Um, and I'm, like you said, Nick, the Terrors are, Phoenix knows what he's doing with the Terrors. I don't know what the hell he's trying to do with the Terrors. I'm, I'm panda pausing up. I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. I'm not the biggest fan of him. Um, but with that being said, like, after everything that you guys have said and just kind of looking at it, I feel like a fair score is like a solid, I think it's a solid seven. I don't think it's amazing. I don't think it's, and I don't think it's bad. I think it's, I mean, six isn't bad, but it's like, it's a good team. I want to know what it can do. Cause clearly I don't know what's going on. We both kind of don't know. All three of us kind of don't know what's really going on with this team, but Phoenix obviously does, or he wouldn't have drafted it. So this team's either going to be really good or it's going to be pretty good. I don't think it's not going to be bad at all. I think it's going to be really good or pretty good. And that's just depending on how Phoenix runs it. So yeah. I'm gonna give it a seven. That's that's a that's a fair score, I think. Um, I'm, I'm gonna go a little higher and say seven point five. Um, I would like to to give it an eight, to be honest, because even though I don't know how to run it, I know that there's no bad Pokemon here. 
okay? Just because I don't know how some of them work doesn't mean that I think any of them are bad. Short of Salazzle, I don't personally like Salazzle, but that's neither here nor there. That, that's a personal preference. Um, I know you two are, like, particularly Jake loves Salazzle. But, um, but yeah, I know the individual Pokemon are good. I just don't know how he's going to run it, but I can't give it an 8 entirely because of the Terrors. Right, I don't think the terrors are that detrimental to it that it's going to bring it down a lot, but I just don't see what significance they're going to have. Yeah, um, a bit on the side of you, Nick. I am going to go a seven point five. I wanted to give it eight. Um, the reason why I would give it eight is the sum of its parts. But a team is not made by the sum of its parts. It all has to work together in the end. Um, I suppose we can all eat our words. Um, I, one thing I will say is I'm not. I'm glad I'm not playing it. Um, we've got one Ursulina on my side. I wouldn't have. I'd have been hated to get two. Um, so. I got a week one. Uh, yeah. I'll let y'all know. I'll come back. Saying that, I'll I think it's when change it to a ten. Yeah, that's yeah. it. <laughs> saying that when Ursulina hit the meta, everyone used it, and then it kind of fell off because people found the way around it. There are ways around it, except for this one is special. So it's. It's a whole different ball game, but yeah, I would give it a 7.5 as well. Okay, so sitting happy middle, or first middle, I call it. Um, Nick, so there's no point me going through this when we can get the pilot himself going through this. Take it away, boy. Don't think I did great. <laughs> I really don't think I did great. So, okay, I, I need to make it abundantly clear that this is not, this was not the plan, okay? Um, the the plan was I wanted Pelipper and Chien Pao. And between the two of them, you can make some disgusting things happen, right? Um, and I'm looking at both of them and I'm like, well, I think Weather is going to be more popular than Chien Pao. As good as Chien Pao is, I, I didn't, I, I thought there was more likelihood of being able to wield that, especially as I thought some people might like hold off on their S tiers and things. So I had to decide, okay, I need to pick up Pelipper first. If I'm going to do weather, you've got to pick your weather setter first. So I grabbed Pelipper. Um, and then Chien Pao went before I got my second pick, which puts me in a, a bind because then I'm like, okay, so all of these physical attackers I've planned on picking up, um, pretty pointless. Well, not pointless, but not doing the same thing. I have the beginnings of a rain team. Um, but because I was thinking Chen Pao and it's like your lower defenses, it's like, well, do you know what? You can do Chi Yu and then I just need to switch to special. So I pick up Chi Yu as my second Pokemon. Um, however, Chi Yu doesn't work in the rain, which was only pointed out to me like the moment the draft finished. Jake turns around and he's like, you've had a stinker. I'm like, what? Why? He's like, Chi Yu in the rain. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> Um, so, <laughs> with that in mind, essentially everything that was being picked up was kind of like, it's either going to work in the rain or it's going to work with Chi Yu. I was trying to get it to, to work together and I wanted a trick room element as well, hence why you see like Spiritomb in there. Um, I, I need to make significant changes to my team. Like, I, I like the individual parts are good. The sum of it is somehow less than the... The whole is less than the sum of its parts. I think that'd be the right way of saying. Um, also, because I was like trying to work out what Pokemon I was trying to pick up, Terra types very much fell by the wayside. And the ones I got... like I'm not upset with Poison. I think Poison is actually pretty good for me. Electric is debatable. It's not bad, but it's not great. Um, so... Yeah, this is kind of the situation I'm in, and I, I, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a rough season. I know that much. Go on, Lukey boy, pass some comment because then I'll I'll come in because I've had to play this match. I've had to uh, me and Nick have played. Um, yeah, we, so we've I'll already played. I, I'll tell one. my thorough analysis to this, uh, but I'll let Lukey yeah. go first. All right. So uh, first off, I hate this team because he took my guard. Uh, <laughs> but I took a single B tier. Get over it. I don't get sniped in the draft. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> anyways, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I kind of like kind of what Nick said. I mean, as it was going along, like I was just like, what is going on here? Like, because I like saw Chi Yu go off the board, and I'm like, um. 
Pelipper has Drizzle, right? He's not. He's not. Is he running like Kenai on this Pelipper or something? Yeah, um, man, that's the plan. That's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like I'm sitting in the car, like thinking about this. I'm like. I mean, maybe I don't know something. I'm just gonna ignore it. But now that you've confirmed it to me, I'm like, ah, shit, that's a mulligan. <laughs> um, I mean, overall, I mean, just swap the damn Chi Yu out or get rid of the Pelipper and you solve a lot of the issues that you have right now. Um, that being said, I don't, I like love Noivern. Noivern's great. I used Noivern a couple, a couple years back. We already know Gujra's great. Drake, she's used Gudra so many different times. We already know the power that Gudra has. I think Gardevoir was a really good pickup. It's got a lot of utility, obviously. Um, really don't know about the Dancing Duck. Um, you know, don't know too much what he does, but could be cool. Um, Spiritomb, I'm not a big fan of Spiritomb. I think it's only been used to perfection one time by Jake, and every other time someone's tried to use it, it's never done what it's needed to do. And that's my biggest problem with Spiritomb. I'm like, you gotta know how to use it or it's pointless. Um, and then Shrudel, I get why you have Shrudel. Obviously it's a D tier, I'm not gonna rack on you on that. I mean, considering it was kind of, you kind of had a fucky wucky draft. I mean, you, you, your type chart's not hideous. I mean, you got- I'm sorry, have you round. seen my four times weakness to fairy? <laughs> actually, it's only, actually on the type chart, it says minus two right now. Minus um, two? Oh no, yeah, I have four yeah, weaknesses so, to it, but yeah. Yeah, 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 totally. yeah. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's not horrendous. It's um, not great. It's not great. <laughs> uh, your terrors are questionable. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's not. I mean, I'm sorry, Nick. It's not great. Um, <laughs> hey, you know, no, <laughs> you I'll, I'll save it. him a little bit. I'll save him a little go bit. Ahead. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. So, Nick, picking up Pelopachiu is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. But there's one key, p key part that is needed in that, is Terra Water. And unfortunately, I need I wanted that as well, but Nick didn't get the opportunity to because both Terra Waters went back on the wheel pick that he picked from Chi Yu. So the only thing that could have saved that really is that or a Steel Terra, which both went with me and Jack. Um, that being said, it's a very hard team to prep for. Even being in the rain, Chi Yu isn't too bad. A Terra Poison Chi Yu is still going to do damage in the rain. It's just it can't get the water Terra Blast off that it wants. Terra Electric, I'm a big fan of, especially with Levitate users. No weaknesses. I mean, Electros has no weaknesses anyway. And then that comes out in the rain and starts banging off thunders. It's going to hurt. Gudra Hydration in the rain. If you can get some sort of healing going, it, it, it do, the thing doesn't die. And let's be it's, honest, you don't need... It's status, it's not, it's not actual... Oh, is it status? HP. Oh, that's, yeah. that's fair enough. Tell you what, though, one thing I did not account for in my prep, well, I did until, like, five minutes before, and I started screaming. That Quake Quavel in the rain, with Aqua Step, choice banded. Good luck. Good luck, because I'm pretty sure... Does Aqua Step do speed? Aqua Step boosts your speed, yes. It's, by I one? think it's 80 or, 80 or 85 base and boosts it by one, yeah. Choice banded, Moxie, done. Game over in the rain, done. Not nothing from my team could live. Uh, that being said, I think Spiritomb's. We've we've talked about it a long time. Me and Nick did the tier list pretty much. Um, that thing is borderline A tier. It is. I don't care what anyone says. Now it gets Trick Room. It's borderline A tier. So I think that, like Nick says, he's got a couple of things that need to be swapped. You either you either lean into the rain, and you go for it with the rain. I personally would stick with the rain i think pelop is a great mon um and given that we have a lot of rain abuse uh, well weather abuse this season it's always nice to have counter weather yourself um swap the chi Yu out there's plenty in s tier um and then a couple of things like uh, noivern yes is great double dragon not so great because it's highlight the noivern highlights what the week the, the gudra like you want yeah. the gudra to sit yeah. there and be your main tank you want to be like, sit there, hit me, weakness policy, get wept. No, Noivern just points out, points it out a bit more. Like, it's, everyone's just like, well, I was hardcore. Like, well, I'm just going to hardcore lean into ice. And then both your terror types are weak to ground. So it's like, so I'm just going to lean into ice, hit basically everything for neutral. And then I'm just going to put a ground move on some things and then sweep up the rest when you inevitably terror your dragon types because you kind of had to because I had fairy types going on and whatnot. Um, 
that being said, I think it's... I think it's... I'm going to give it a six, Nick. With two trades, it becomes an eight. Yeah. I think I, I think that's more than fair. Like, but you also had to draft two at the same time. I've done it, yes. Seb's done it, and we've both ended up with really bad teams. So, like... I, I, <laughs> I appreciate you pointing that out because as we've already discussed, I was having to make up Joel's team at the same time as entirely changing my plan. Like drafting one team is hard, guys. Drafting two, so difficult. So, so difficult. Um, so I appreciate you, you pointing that out. Uh, it was not easy. Luke's got a smile on his face. I can see a less than five coming here. <laughs> I expect it. I expect it. I'm just messing with you. No, please. Two. Like, I, I think it's below. <laughs> I, I, I think it's under average, right? If five is I, average, I think it should be less than five, personally. I personally, I mean, Nick, I mean, the fact that you're beating up your team this bad is like, tells a lot for me. Because if you're not behind it, you definitely can see it, right? But yeah. that being said, like Jake said, two trades and this team's fixed. So it's not you got you got the foundation. So I'm gonna give you a, I'm gonna give you a five point five mm -hmm. because I think it's not I think it's better than average right now. I think you with the stuff that Jake said you can make it work. Better than average, like Quake Quavo. I don't want to go up against it after he told me that. I'm, I'm scared. All right. <laughs> um, and like like Jake said, two two trades and you're good. I honestly can see that too. You swap out a couple mons here, maybe give me back my guard of war. Um, you know. But uh, five point five. Things could be arranged. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 5. Okay. 5. Well, th thank you very much. I think you've both been incredibly generous to me. Um, personally, I'm not I'm not scoring it because it's my team. I'd have given it a four. However, I do agree that two, three trades, this thing can easily become an eight. Like there's there's right. enough raw material there to work with. Um, you, and you so were just while unlucky, I'm, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm beating up my current team. Yeah. The team I'm going to have at the end of the season, I promise you, is going to look a whole lot different to this, and I won't be beating up that one. Like, oh. I, I am confident I can make this work. One terror, and that would have been fine. You just terror the yeah. Chiyu every week. All righty -o, <laughs> halfway through, second half of the draft now into. We are setting off with the Traverse City Tour Terrors. Now... Before the draft, there was a lot of smack talk going on from this young man, this young whippersnapper, that he was going to first pick a more Pekko. No one believed him, and you see it sitting there in D tier. The man picked it! <laughs> um, don't know what it does, but then he rounded out the team very well. I mean, this is the second of the hardcore trick room teams. I, I was, I, I've started prepping for this as my second game. Average speed on this thing, I think, is below 40. You've got an Ursa Luna, a Komoto, uh, Hatterene, Orphworm, Morpeko, Cramorant, Furret, Quagsire, Sunflora, and a Torkoal. Now, I have nightmares of Torkoal every single time. I've played it four times last season. Luckily, this one doesn't have a Lilligan. So there's no Chlorophyll Sleep Powder after you shenanigans. Um, he does have Terra Fire and Terra Dark, which obviously leans into the sunsetting abilities, which means Fire Terra Blasts are coming from everything. Um, Mystical Fire, I suppose, is posed on the Hatterene. The only downside to this team that I can see other than that is that, is that it ha leans so hard into Trick Room that its only setter is Hatterene. Saying that, for it has Follow Me and Hatterene is bulky enough to take two spread moves. So the moment Trick Room goes off, you're practically playing catch up for the next four turns um, and killing when you can. Because, let's be honest, Ursaluna is just going to sit there, flame orb guts facade, or EQ your whole team to death. Komoto, since it got reintroduced in the DLC, has shown that it's an absolute monster when you can get rid of its times four. Hatterene. Single-handedly, I think it's the second best special attacker in the game in terms of base stats behind Iron Moth. Orphworm is so annoying. Shed Tail, Earth Eater, Iron Defense, Body Press. More Pekka, I don't have a clue. It's Fake Out, I suppose, and then Hunger Switch. Um, Cromorant, I've never played before as well, but I know it's got some power behind it. 
For it is just incredibly annoying. Quagsire is also incredibly annoyingly bulky with Yawn. Some Flora. I mean, I've played ROM hacks where they make this thing absolutely bonkers, but I mean, it's got solar power and chlorophyll, I suppose, and it probably gets sleep powder, which is maybe what he's going for. And then the beast itself, the turtle of death at the bottom. Eruption, heat wave, earth power. It's the only, the only moves you need. Um, I don't know what anyone else has got to say on this. I, I'm, I'm terrified of this team. Okay, I'm terrified so, of it. I, I have some opinions on this team. <clears throat> First of all, I, I don't inherently disagree with what you're saying. This team has some very scary stuff going on. Uh, definitely heavy trick room strats. Um. Kamaro doesn't necessarily need Trick Room. Like, I think there's things that can work outside of it. Obviously, Orthworm is a weird, weird Pokemon. Sat next to Ursaluna, just kicking out Earthquakes or something like that. Um, yeah, G gonna be... Yeah, a, a, it's, it's gonna be a bizarre team, I feel, to, to play. Um, the, the thing that I really want to pick up on, more than anything else, is the number of points left on the table here. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing, but 11 points, you, you can see there, um, that's how many is left. A B tier costs 11 points, so he has a whole B tier just ready and waiting. So, Cramorant or Slun Sunflora, or even more Peko for that matter, because obviously any D tier can be swapped straight into a B tier. So you mentioned, oh, this one doesn't have Lilligant. That Sunflora could become a Lilligant like that, right? Um, yeah, exactly. And then it's the same strats we've seen a hundred times over, which, yeah, we know what's coming, but you can't do much about it. Um, so I, I do question whether that was wise. Now, that said, Raz knows what he's doing. He, he's no stranger to draft, and he's already put a video out basically explaining a lot of his choices. Um, he's he's pretty confident about everything he's picked. Like, he I, he definitely... He never even touched on the, the leftover points or whatnot. So he it clearly is happy with, with what he's got here. Personally, if it was me, I'd be looking at whether that Cramorant is really the... the best Pokemon for the, the slot. I know I said you can turn Sunflora into a Lilligant, but like at least Sunflora is kind of like, it, it can do a thing and like it works in Trick Room and stuff like that. Uh, and in, it's got Chlorophyll, whereas Cramorant, it, I know it's it's a novelty. That, that That's the way I see it. It's a novelty and it's like, you turn that into something uh, like, I, I can't think off the top of my head. Um, Gengar. No, I, I really can't. <laughs> Typhlosion. He could pick up yeah. a Typhlosion, right? In Sun. <laughs> In Sun. There you go. There's something he could do. Um, and yes, with Terra Fire. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Get him in position, and this thing is just like eruption, eruption, eruption. Eru sweep your whole team. I'm not sure if a Rangaroo is still out there. Like, pick up a Rangaroo or something like that. You can easily get another Trick Room setter if you want to from B. So, I. I'm really interested uh, in the leftover points. Now, moving on from that, yeah, it, I think pretty much, Jake, you've already covered it. Like, it's it's hardcore trick room. Um, it's got a lot of tools to work with, and I think it's very, very good. But with just the one main setter in, in Hatterene, it could be um, maybe one-dimensional. I think is the, is the best way to put it. Um, but yeah. Luke, do you have anything else to say? Because like, I, I feel at this point, I'm just going to start repeating what Jake's already said. I'm, I'm just focused on those leftover points. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to like beat a dead horse. A lot of the same things I want to say I have, you guys have already touched on, so I'm not even going to bother with it. Biggest thing, team synergy. Does this team have team synergy? 100%. Yeah. Um, are we questioning the points? 100%. But team synergy. You know, if you get trick room, this team gets trick room off. You're, you're gonna be, pedaling from behind. You're probably not gonna win. Um, that being said, um, it needs trick room, and that's, that's it. Like you stop trick room, you beat this team pretty much. If you don't, if you don't stop trick room, you're gonna be playing from behind the ball 
the entire match. Um, but the biggest thing for me is team synergy, good, strong mobs that work well together. Um, yeah, the Cramorant, I think it's stupid. Um, but thank you, you know, thank you. <laughs> uh, but that being said, I I'll come up I'll come up against this this cram rant in the playoffs and I'll beat my ass. So that being said, I mean nothing. I'm not going to say anything else on this team. I think it's a solid. Honestly, it's a solid. I'd give it a seven point five. Honestly, that's how I feel about this team. I think it's really I think it's really good. My biggest gripe on teams is team synergy and strong mods, and he's got these in spades. Um, and the Terra's work really well. Um, you know, I think he might, if he trades out some mods, he can make it even better. Um, but right now, as the team stands, even though he picked a couple D tiers, it's, they work really well together. I'd give it a 7.5. Um, I, I think, uh, Luke, we're letting you go last on all of these. So you're talking about beating a dead horse. You are always having to pick up like what we've yeah, he, already got he over. You can have the first or the next one. <laughs> yeah, next one. You've got to go first, man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. Okay. So... I'm I'm really torn about how to point this one because I I think that if it gets in the position it wants to be in, uh, it, it's great. And I don't think that that position is necessarily Trick Room. I know we've talked about it a lot, but I think that the Pokemon are all scary enough uh, and he has enough other tools with things like Furret um, and the, uh, the Sun and things like that that he, he can do some stuff without it you know orthworm opens up whole new cans of worms for setup and things i like what you did there. um yeah <laughs> so okay that was not the uh that was not the intention <laughs> no pun was intended but it was a happy accident anyway um yeah i i think that that said it it's still it's still quite one dimensional was the term I used before and I go back to it. Or you can almost like see how things are gonna come. Like I feel that while it's gonna do what it does really well, it's potentially easy to prep for. Um so this is why I'm sort of like stuck in the middle. I feel like personally I'm gonna go six point five, and that might be underscoring it, but I need to see how Raz can handle it. Um, I know he's good. I just don't know whether he's going to be good with particularly this. Plus the leftover points. I I know you shouldn't be forced to pick for the sake of picking the, the higher tiered mons, but they're in a higher tier for a reason. I'm yeah. sorry, Cramorant is not pickable over like some of the stuff we've got in, in B tier. You know, you've got your Typhlosion, as I mentioned. You've got the Lilligans. You've got, there's, there's uh, so many more. Um, so, no, I, I can't go any more than 6.5. Yeah, I, I'm going to give it... I'm going to split the deadlock and go a 7. Um, very scary power. And I understand it doesn't need Trick Room. Like Nick said, it can throw a Choice Scarf on a Nurse Luna uh, and just click Follow Me, Facade everything away. Um, yeah, it's a it's a hardcore 7 for me. Like it, it, it could easily turn into like like Nick's team could turn into an eight. This could turn into a nine, very quickly, um, which I'm very scared of because he's got a trade before he plays me. Um, so hashtag don't pick Lilligan, please. Uh, next, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Before, oh. before you go, just want to say, uh, PSA: If you live in America, uh, they are giving out Pokemon cards and uh, McDonald's Ooh. Happy Meals. Oh, nice. <laughs> We, we've, got them in, we've got them in UK at the moment already, Jake, if you didn't know. Um, I'm not going to go to Mackie's anytime quick, soon. <laughs> real quick, just staying, <laughs> staying on this uh, to bring us back on topic. We, we didn't touch on the Dark Terra type, and I think that with Trick Room is potentially big. So, because you can Terra to, like, stop all the prankster shenanigans and stuff like that. But just yeah. wanted to throw that in there. Like, that, I think that is a good choice. Lukey boy. Yay! Your turn. Tell me wow. what you think of Toby's team. Ah, it's scary. <laughs> this. <laughs> this is the one. Um, I mean, yeah, this is this. I mean, goddamn. Um, yeah, so you look at it, guys. This is how it goes. It goes Annihilate, Mousehold, Slow King Galar, Donphan, Morgrim. But this points he picked up Arcanine, Backscalibur, Go Go, Kilowatcher, and Low Kick. If, if this team screams, hold my beer and you're going to sleep really quick because you're going to get knocked the fuck out. 
Um, I mean, it's re it really is. That's what it screams. I mean, guys. I mean, we already saw the dangers of annihilate from last season. Mouse hold on top of it while it's you know it wasn't as effective as we you, we originally thought it was. It was still pretty damn effective if you weren't prepared for it. I'm um, so King Galar always great as well. He loves Don fan. So if anyone's gonna make that Don fan work, it's gonna be. It's gonna be Toby. Couldn't have picked up a better prankster user than Morgrim in the D tier spot. Um, Arcanine, Baxcalibur, two of the freaking best, you know, A tiers in the game, honestly. Um, go go. That's the questionable one for me. Um, not the biggest fan of Goko. I'm not sure what Goko really gets. Um, Kill Walsh already know that he's really solid as well. And then low kicks again um for a solid C tier to round it off. I mean. Overall, it's, it's just on put on paper, it's great. I mean, I know I'm the guy with the type chart looked up. I mean, right now, I mean, he's got a couple of minus twos that are a little, a little bit, you know, alarming. He's got a minus two to fairy, a minus two to um, rock, and ice. Um, the only thing I have a problem with is this is how you stop this team. You bring ice because unfortunately his two terrors he brought do not help him against his ice weakness. Um, and that's probably where how you stop. A majority of this team especially some of the lower tier mons but then again you just have the power from the annihilate and the mouse hold that's just gonna destroy lives and the fact that you he, he can he has so many ways he can beat you is you know a really compliment to him and yeah thanks for letting me go first <laughs> um oh, I'm, okay I'm, I'm still going for the middle you're, you're bringing up the rear then jay okay lovely um okay so there's there's some crazy mons here obviously the the stuff that I, I look down this team and i'm like you could probably like make a team of six that would actually like do well at proper tournaments right that's how good these pokemon are these are like actual meta uh meta quality pokemon it, you, you look at some of the other teams that we've got going on and it's like yeah the pokemon are great in draft but they'd never do anything in, in the real world, if you like. Whereas this team, like, I Annihilate, Mousehold, Arcanine, Backscale, uh, even Killer Watchful to a point. I reckon there has probably been a team with, like, all five of those Pokemon on it. Um, and that's, while that speaks to its strength, I think that's also potentially it, its one downside in that we've seen this a lot like you know not necessarily in draft but we've seen in the the vgc world we've seen this sort of stuff time and time again and people know how to handle the common tools of this now i think with stuff like slow king galar thrown in there um go go again i don't know too much about it i know that it's uh, can hit pretty hard though um low kicks is a really interesting one like that's the spice which is actually going to make this team interesting now i will say that on draft day i gave toby a lot of shit over done fan um that's just because i had it last time i didn't make it work toby i want it on the record i i actually really like done fan if anything i'm just sour that i couldn't make it work and because of that i'm going to keep giving you shit over it but like it's worth it friendly it's friendly banter i promise anyway um so yeah i think that the tools and with flying and ground terror type like they're really really good but it the good pokemon that you know are not what makes this team interesting what makes this team really tricky to handle is the stuff that you don't know and don't like think about when prepping for vgc stuff um, I think the combination of the two make this team very good. Like, probably this is, this has the potential to be one of the best teams that we've seen so far. Um, needs to be piloted well, does need to be piloted well, but like, you, the team as a whole, I, I think is solid. Although you mentioned that ice weakness, that is, uh, that is scary. And that's something that needs to be considered from him. Right. This is a hardcore me team. If Toby could have drafted any team, this is, well, like, this is my dream. 
This is hyper offense on steroids. You mentioned the ice weakness. It's all well and good. I suppose ice beam and stuff is fine. You like in some cases you want to set up the snow. Uh, so you can start spamming blizzards. The moment you do that, Baxgal's getting a boost to its defense or spadef. I can't remember which one. Um, it doesn't need the boost on its defenses, let's be honest. Um, my gripe with this team is the Terrors. The, uh, the Terrors are extremely synergistic between themselves. Um, also, it lets stuff like the Kilo Wattrel and the Donphan go berserk. To be honest, it lets the Baxgal go berserk as well with EQ. Um, it's just, Baxgal, I've used it. I, I I love that thing. It was my like my first pick last season. Well, not first pick, but second to first pick. Um, it just needs a lot of work around it. Saying that, he's got Follow Me Mousehold with Friend Guard. That is enough to let Baxgal get the Dragon Dance off it needs to Urkel your whole team with Glaive Rush. And then it's over. It's over. Uh, he's got Beat Up Annihilate. It's the, the I, I see this as the mouse hold is a key. Uh, I, I I know Arcanine is brilliant, and on paper it it loves it looks amazing, and every meta team had it once. But like Nick said, now everyone knows how to navigate it. And I when I used it, I always struggled with it. It always had natural bulk, but it never seemed to get enough done. You either build it bulky and start will o wisping things, or it's wild charge just doesn't kill or it's flare blitz just doesn't kill it's like i think i had it last season when i played donkey and i just played all my friends were dead with it it's like it just kept not doing enough saying that this is the first team i'm going to give a nine because it's a very me team and if i was piloting this i don't think i'd have many problems um and i don't think toby will have many problems either yeah. Um, so I'm I'm really close. I, I've been toying up like it's definitely around the nine. Uh, I'm going to go 8.5. And part of that is the eye sweetness. Part of that is you've seen what the good Pokemon already do. Um, I don't think that they're not good. Like, I can't go low for it just because we've seen them used. But I, I do think that that maybe makes it not predictable. Um, but he, he can't just run it one way week after week after week because people will cut onto it. Um, but it, it is the, the terrors and the, the ice weakness, which is the main thing, I think, which just, just knocks it uh, out of the, the nine mark for me. Um, but still, very good. Very good. Yeah, um, I agree with everything that everyone said. Um, I'm going to give it a 9 um, just because of the pure... It's just the best team we've seen um, by far so far. Yeah. Um, like, right right around there. I mean, it's just like, obviously, the first couple teams are really good. Just on paper and looking behind the scenes of what this team can possibly do, it's the best thing we've seen so far. Um, and with that being said, you know, I agree with everything one says. So let's just go on and move to the next one. Give them a nine and look at Toby we'll be being number it. one so far. Yeah. Yeah, definitely leading the pack so far. He did it again last season and he's done it again this season. Nick, go ahead. So my Chien <laughs> Pal Sniper. Um, <laughs> I mean, this team is garbage. He needs to get so many things out of here. That GM power for one needs to go right in the trade center. Like, let's just mark this down as a two and move on. Yeah? Sound good to everybody? Um, no. Okay. Seri <laughs> seriously. <laughs> um, he has Chen Pao next to a Dragonite. Well, I mean, that works. If we were talking about what's been seen in the meta with the last game, I think we've seen uh, Chen Pao with Dragonite just as much and and probably in more recent times as well um so very good there tinkerton is um i used it previously and it's got a lot of tools the problem it has is dishing out damage hey it's got chien power to solve that problem so look at this now it's uh it's better than it uh, ever could be um scoville is an interesting one i'm 
I, I'm personally not a big fan of it, but it gets things like Rage Powder and it's interesting typing for sure. Uh, Luminion, I don't know what it does, Tailwind. so I can't comment on that. Ah, there we go. Thank you. Tailwind Storm Drain. <laughs> right. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, that's that's pretty good then. Um, Arbok, Intimidate, Dog Trio, just glass speed cannon type thing. Great. Next to GM Pow. It's going to take some kills. <laughs> Coughing. <laughs> <laughs> Coughing is great, although I feel like with this particular team, he does need to be careful because a lot of the abilities that you're running here are big. Yeah. Uh, Magnazone is great, and Rillaboom is bonkers. Next to a Chien Pao, that Grassy Glide can take heads, right? I know Grassy Glide got nerfed, but do not sleep on it, guys. Do not like the power of really root. Rill really room <laughs> rillaboom on grassy terrain with a priority move next to chien pao that is honestly going to do some real damage i think that overall i really like this there's a couple of pokemon that i i i question a little bit i mean arbok is purely there for intimidate i'm guessing because it's not a great pokemon to be honest with you um and doug trio while i know it's got the speed and can hit hard it's i mean glass doug cannon trio. glass cannon is a, a, a it's as frail as they come right yep. um so th there's a couple of questions but those are the low tier stuff i think all the high tier ones which was what really matters that's the the crux of what makes up a team i think are great and, and then a couple of those low tiers backing it up like this is a solid team normal and ghost terror types as well like let's not sleep on those like i mean normal terror type on the extreme speed dragonite and ghost for chien pao like you don't need to terror anything else and it is job done um this this is a scary team. Yeah, I, I I haven't really focused too much on it recently, but like I personally think this might be one of the best ones out there. This is a personal opinion. You guys might disagree, but yeah. Um uh, oh, Luke, 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 we'll, we'll we'll leave Jake for last again. He's gone first often enough. <laughs> yeah, um yeah, basically I agree with a lot of what you said. Um you know, I'm not really big into the meta this uh, this time around, so I know Chien Pal's really a big part, so it's Dragonite. Um, I don't... Rillaboom's my biggest gripe. I think Rillaboom's going to be really good. Don't get me wrong. I, it's a Rillaboom. There's no 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 questions about that, right? I haven't been keeping up since it's been reintroduced, so I don't know how well it's been doing on the competitive scene as, as well. Has it been doing well? Can y'all answer that for, for uh, me? Rillaboom? It, yeah. It's getting there. Yeah, it's uh, top 10 usage. Yeah. Okay, it, okay. All right. It's okay. seeing play, man. Okay, so it's a real, so it's Rillaboom, so not much. Okay, see, that was my biggest reason. I don't know. I have not been paying attention to competitive. It does the same thing uh, as what it did three seasons ago. It's, uh, okay. it's no, nothing uh, changed. Okay, that's all, that's <laughs> all I need changed. to know. All right. All right. Anyways, yeah, now this team's really scary. <laughs> um, but, like, yeah, on paper, like, it is very... Um, it hits hard. It's got a lot going well. Team sit like I, I'll be the biggest crap in the world. You can have the best mods in the world, but if they don't work well together. What the, what's the point of having them? Um, this is a prime example of that. They work really well together. I do have questions on some of the lower tier picks. Um, definitely understand why they went these this route. And the question is like, do you, are you really going to be finding much usage out of Scoville, Luminion, Arbok, Doug Trio, and Cough? Um, and this team maybe for like a certain matchup here and there overall i think you could have done a little bit better on those lower tier picks uh you could have also gotten a lot better of a mon besides arbok for intimidate if you're really you really want that intimidate. um that being said um i think it's a solid team i like nick said i think it's one of the better teams um i definitely think it's one of the top teams that we've seen so far for sure and um, the Terras really help it out. Like, again, the Terras really balance this team out really well. The type chart that I'm looking at looks really solid. There's nothing that's glaring to me at all. Um, and it's a Chien Pao Dragonite. What more can you ask for with a real boon to back it up? Like, that's, 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 that's a good team. 
Ah, oh, boys, this is where I hardcore disagree on this one. Um, oh, okay. This team, to me, is not very good. Um, <gasps> the team completely falls apart the moment the Chien Pao leaves the field. <clears throat> or, or, double intimidate, charm, anything miraculously bad comes out. I, like, don't get me wrong, Magnazone's not, Magnazone is brilliant, but he is hardcore relying on that for his only special usage. There is no reason for you to not just go hardcore defense investment in this. Um, bring every Intimidate user under the sun. I have had Ghost Normal before. 80% of his mons are going to be Ghost, barring the Dragonite. Normal does not get you anything in terms of Terror type. It really doesn't. Like, defensively, it could have gone way better for Chien Pao. You could have picked something that's, like, maybe immune to some things. It's going to be Ghost every week because he wants to avoid a fake out. Granted that saying, you can only Terror one mon. As soon as the Chien Pao goes, or as soon as you drop Intimidates on this, the whole power's gone. The whole power's gone, or if you stick a Ghost type in front of it. I'm the one with the Ghost type Terror, so maybe I'm looking at this completely different, but if you stick a Ghost type in front of this, Dragonite completely nullified, um, because you're going first. You're going first. His Tailwind setters are Dragonite and Lumineon. Rillaboom gets ripped. If you could survive a glassy, Grassy Glide, let's be honest, Grass is not the hardest type to resist. The Grassy Terrain isn't affecting his Dragonite until he terrors it. Your Grassy Terrain, so you're getting natural healing from that Rillaboom that a few of his Mons will not. I just think the team comes apart too quickly once the, once the Chien Pao goes. It, it, it's one Scarf Mon away from just killing it. I think he's got too many Focus Sash users if he wants to bring them. Like... Maybe I'm seeing it all wrong, but it's all priority based as well. Who's to say you just don't bring Quick Guard one week? And the, the most obvious E speed fake out comes in, and then you just Quick Guard and one bomb, and the Dragonite's out of here. Granted, being saying just double intimidate ruins the whole team. It just. Seb will have. <laughs> if Seb was on the side of the field, or if anyone else has double intimidate, I've only got one. But if you've got double intimidate, this whole team is ruined. It forces him to switch, and then you could just pin him with spread moves. Granted, Chien Pao's sucker punching. Like, I think Jack is going to have an amazing time with this. Fluttermane completely ruins this team. Oh, I'm sorry. Fluttermane <laughs> is the answer. That is not a criticism yeah, no. of any team, because Fluttermane is Fl as broken as they come. Fluttermane for Rigoraf. Tell me how this team stops it. It just doesn't. It just doesn't. Granted, it's fine. I, I'm giving it a four. Okay. I hate to say it, Donkey, but I've done the ghost normal terror thing. It doesn't really work. It's very predictable what you're going. Um, that being said, when you're that hardcore into one physical offense, it's very easy to prep for. Everything is spare EV will go into defense. And what this could have been done with is a King Gambit or something with Defiant. That would have changed it completely. Something that can, or competitive, something where you're going to bring an Intimidate in and it's going to boost your moves. This just suffers. It just suffers so hard on probably the most easy bit of utility someone has. All right, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to jump in here and, uh, hard, hard dis I mean, you were disagreeing with us, so obviously I'm disagreeing with you. Yeah. Uh, nine. Like, I, I think this, is, I gave the last one an 8.5, the, this, I think, is the best team we've seen so far. I get your point about the predictable factor. I really do. Um, however, just because something is arguably easy to prepare for doesn't mean it still doesn't do what it wants to do. I think that y you go full physical investment, Chen Pao does tear that apart. Um, the Scovillain next to a Dragonite like rage powder and swords dance and then it doesn't even need the chien pal i i think that this has the potential to have so much offensive pressure like it doesn't it doesn't matter like it may not win every single match because of what you say like somebody may one week just go like oh no i've got this in the bag because they're jack and they have a farigaraf and a fluttermane but that doesn't invalidate the the team as far as i see it and 
I'm I'm going completely the other way. This is a nine for me. So, uh, Luke, are you are you going to break the deadlock or uh, are you going <laughs> to? Well, Luke has to play it. So. <laughs> well, yeah, this, oh, yeah. this is true. Um, you have to play it. You're looking at this from a different perspective than us. We may never come up against this unless we get to it in the playoffs or something. So, like, how do you feel as a potential opponent to this? Are you like, oh, easy to prep for? Like, no problem. I mean, I, I personally want to go this time. I, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I personally am not going to have a problem dealing with that Chien pal. But um, that being said, though, I see where Jake's coming from. The Chi and Pao is his centerpiece, but you have to you have to stop it and you have to prep it. And to be fair, you know, as I'm just saying, as life is now, we probably actually are for the first time since last year gonna have a decent time to prep. And that's one thing that we always say about meta versus non-meta, right? Is with prep, any team's beaten on paper. So I completely get where Jake's coming from. That being said. By no means in hell, this is a fucking four. <laughs> um, Thank I would. You. Thank I, you. I, I, I just mean, think it's too would, easy, man. I think it's I, just too easy. Is, and that's it's, fair. And then when when Donkey goes one and when Donkey goes two and five this year, I will come. I will fly to England. I will shake your hand. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> all right. But I'm gonna give it an eight because I think there are better teams than this. I also do think that the Cup Food team is better than this by far. Um, and I think it's on par with, you know, the first two teams we saw. So I'm gonna give it an eight and, you know, you know, Jake, prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. It, it, hey, look, I'll, I'll eat my hat. I, 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 there's right. always one team where I do this, where I give it a hardcore <laughs> to everything else. It's just, I've used a lot of these tools before and I'm, All right, okay, yeah. my time to shut up now after being controversial. Um, uh, go on boys, I mean, no, my you, team apart. You, well, you. You say shut up, like you you got me to give a rundown of my team before you oh, on, you two uh, analyzed I, it. So so how do you feel it went for you? Um, not brilliant, not brilliant. Um, I think I recovered well. Um, being sniped off the first rip, I wasn't plan planning on being sniped on walking wake. I didn't think it would be too much. Um, I then had a decision to make: do I still go the rain call that I wanted, or do I go? elsewhere to other things i decided on the polytoad on the one reason was i kind of knew what jack was picking and i kind of knew where luke was going and there was an urge through rapid on the put on the table and i was like i would be dumb not to pick up an urge through rapid in the rain um then it came back to me and i was like you know what great core i just need to round it out with um i can round it out with pokemon later let's go steel ghost on the terratyping. I've been a big advocate for Ghost. I think it's uh, probably the second best or third best terratyping behind Fire and Water. Um, and then Steel was just a it was a needed pickup for Urshifu um, because I knew all, all, most of my team builds that I was having, I was leaning into a fairy weakness. Uh, that being said, going down the line, I have a Jumpluff, a Persian, a Kamala, Ampharos, Espeon, Quillfish, Hisui, Scizor, and a Zoroark, Hisui. Jumpluff, the reason behind Jumpluff is it's an absolute menace. Um, I think it was overlooked as a support mon. It gets Rage Powder, Tail, and uh, Screens. Gets Chlorophyll if someone wants to bring Sun against me, so I've got Speed Boost. It gets Strength Sap, Cotton, Cotton Spore, whatever it is where it raises my defense, Baton Pass. It's it's there to be really annoying. Persian, I needed to pick it up for fake out usage, but also technician. Icy wind is always but we've seen Persian every season since season one. Um Kamala was my fun pick. Uh, I generally pick one fun thing from a D tier every season. We had the Charger Bug, all shenanigans of Charger Bug, which I never brought. Um and then we had an Ori Corio that I never brought. Kamala, let's see if I can get it in one game. Um Ampharos, I've been a big jelly of Luke since last season, so I wanted to pick that up. I think it's an amazing pickup in C tier. In D tier, is even more cheap. Um, amazing defenses, works in Trick Room. Um, I also, at that point, I needed Heavy Special at this point, so I lent into Espeon as well. Probably the, I think it's like the third best special attacker. Gets Weather Ball, sorts out my Trick Room usage. It's just, and super fast. Quillfish Asui is my main bulk. Intimidate, Eviolite, Toxic, Swift, I've used the Swift Swim versus Nick, the Swift Swim version of it with liquidation in the rain, poison jab, barb barrage. It's there to ruin your life. It's just there to ruin your life. Scizor, 
Picked it up last season, didn't really use it too much because I didn't have the rain. This time I do have the rain, so I think it'll get more viable usage out of it. And then Zoro Akasui, again, I just needed some special mon that was pretty good. And I saw this was a, a good balance of physical and special and also mind games. Uh, but I'm not too sure on that pick. That's the one that's kind of reeking in and out. Granted, though, it, it hits hard. So overall, I'm quite happy with my team. I'd give... I'd give it a 7-ish. It's not the best team I've drafted, but it's not the worst team I've drafted. Um, Power-wise, I think I'm just lacking a little bit. So I, I like how you started off with like, how do you think you've done? Oh, not great. And then you go through it. Was like, Overall, I'm not, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think this is a pretty solid team. You have uh, Shifu Rapid in the rain. In draft, that's great, you know? Um, <clears throat> Amphros throwing out thunders. Yeah, you've got tools on your jump off, your Persian, as you've said. The the mind games with the Zoroark Sui. I'm I'm trying to remember what your type chart looked like, um, and I'm sure Luke can can shed some light on that. I, I don't think it's perfect, but it's certainly not bad. Um, I and the terrors, steel and ghost. You know, like they they're amazing. I think this is pretty good. Um, it's not the best one we've seen so far by any means, but it's definitely up there. I think my biggest concern looking at this team, and I know you have Persian to kind of help with this, is the speed factor. Now, you, you've got a lot of weird speeds because of things like you've got Swift Swim with the Quillfish Sui. You've got access to um tailwind obviously but like the tailwinds on jump Pluff, which is it, it's kind of fast but it's not quite as fast as i know we would like it to be um yeah. yeah it's it's like it's it's just a hair off it's like either either you lean hard into the speed or you you don't care about the speed and when you're setting tailwind i think in my mind but 110 is like it can be beaten and and it's unlikely that you're setting the sun so for me the speed is the only factor which is a, a big concern here other than that it hits hard typings are pretty good and overall like you should be pretty happy with this um yeah just find a way of, of doing something about your speed man that's all i'd suggest um yeah uh i agree with you jake on just saying this is a pretty damn good team considering it's not exactly what you want um, Nick, I'm going to disagree with you on the speed tiers, man. Um, okay. I think he's got some very fast mons on his team. His team base stat for speed is 88. Like, it's not... It's definitely generally faster. You can definitely use some things. That's why he's got that jump fluff there to help him out with that. Um, jump fluff gets tailwind, right? I'm not stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jump fluff gets okay, tailwind. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say. But yeah, I mean, I, th I disagree with the speed. I think his speed's fine. I don't think you need to be too worried about that. Personally speaking, um, type chart looks fine. Again, he's got a couple of minus ones here, but there's nothing glaring on his type chart. Um, I like a lot of these mods. I mean, really like the rain. The uh, I mean, even Urshifu not being in the rain is still a Urshifu. Um, rapid strike. You know, it's gonna be really good in the rain. So if you get countered, you have backups for that. Um, you got. I am a big proponent of a Fabio the Amphros. I think that's a amazing mod. Um, when you guys put it in D tier last year, I thought y'all were stupid. And when you guys move to the C tier, I'm like, that's fair. I honestly think it could be B tier, honestly. Um, if you have the right, it just gets so, it just gets so, it just gets so much utility. That mon can do pretty much anything you want it to do. I really love that. I love that mon pickup wise. Scizor is one of the best. I, Scizor is an amazing Pokemon. You can, you can put a Scizor in any situation and it's going to pick up a kill. Um, yeah, I don't know too much about the Zoro Kisui. I think what, what the biggest thing with Jake is, Jake is very straightforward. Um, he likes what he likes. He doesn't like things that uh, do too much. Um, I think the, I think definitely the Zoro Kusui, see you can make it work. If not, toss that thing out and get something else. Out. Um, Persian, we already know what Persian does. Espeon's really good. Um, but yeah, I think honestly, this is a really solid team. I think you did a good job drafting considering that you were looking out for um, different mods and you got sniped on your first pick. But I think this team has the core of what you wanted to do and you'll be able to figure it out 
and make the changes you need to because you are the trade god that we know you are if you don't like something you will trade that thing out and you will find something better for it um but yeah i mean overall after looking through everything man I'm not gonna disagree with your initial score, Jake. I, I honestly, I think this is a seven. I think it's a seven. I think it's a solid seven. I think there's some ways to. I actually, no, I'm gonna give it a seven point five. I think, it, I think it's a little bit better than a seven. Um, I think there's a lot. I think there's you can improve it. I think it's one trade away from being a nine. Um, and I think that trade that you got to make is taking out that Zorark, and I think it'll be good. Oh, I don't know about dropping the Zorark. Like I know Jake's kind of questioned it and obviously your question i think the mind games that it plays are are very good and i feel like with the ghost terror as well like it has the potential to put down some real real damage um i'm not saying it's gonna catch people every single time like i think you led it against me and i yes. didn't clock that it was the Zorark because it was like it was in it as an Espeon and it was doing Shadow Ball and I was like, yeah, that that's, that's an Espeon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can believe that. <laughs> um, uh, but then like I I hit it with uh, like a water move, I think muddy water or something like that. It's like it did a lot, right? And while it's got some immunities, it's not necessarily like the things that it's going to get hit with the most. But I still think. Like the potential offensive um, surprise of it being there is what's really good. Like I know everyone wants to use a Zorark because it's like you throw it in and then it gets hit with something and then it doesn't get hurt and it's like ha 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 ha. Um, but I think that because of how strong it is, it's more likely to be like oh there's an Amphros there. Well that'll be going last and hitting me with nothing but electric. Um, and then, lo and behold, it's like, no, here's a hyper voice or something crazy like that. Um, so I I don't dislike it. I just, as I say, my only thing is, and I know you've mentioned this to me before, like, you, it's not even that the speed tiers are bad. It's that they're all kind of around the same sort of it's area. Three one tens. I've got three yeah, one tens. That's right. the problem. This is the thing, <laughs> which, I mean, it kind of sounds good, but it's also like it doesn't leave you much room for variety, and like you you can't come up with too many different strategies surrounding it. So, yeah, I I've gone for a seven point five as well. I think it's solid. Um, it, it's solid in what it's trying to do. It it's just it's not perfect by any means, so I, I can't give it higher than that. But it's it's not a bad team at all, Jake. And, and ultimately, I think you should be happy with it. No, I am quite happy with it. Um, yeah, and I agree with all the comments made. Um, I just think it lacks a little bit of bulk. That's all, which is why the Zoroark is is enemy number one. Um, maybe maybe yeah. the bulk is a factor, but it's just a little bit it... of bulk. Yeah. Um, moving on, Loki boy. Take me through your team. Yeah. And the illegal um, and the illegal Lapras. <laughs> <laughs> that Lapras built put that team together, man. Um, yeah, so the whole idea behind this team at first was um I didn't know what S tier I want. But I just remember Ting Lu just being a headache. And I think I can put slap a Ting Lu in pretty much any situation and it can be beneficial to having that on the field. Um, but without it, I mean, really, it's just you, you got some sun mons in there. That's why Ninetales is there to summon the sun to back up Tauros. Um, but yeah, I mean, I really just went through it looking for, you know, good utility. I will say, um, drafting on the fly, not at my computer, on my phone, trying to navigate the spreadsheets and stuff is a headache. Um, so I will definitely say there was a lot of times when after I looked at the draft, I was like, whew, um, uh-oh. Um, on a lot on a couple of things mainly that's that ground weakness um you know that's the biggest one that we gonna have to address during trade this will be one of those years where luke does make trades um normally i <laughs> draft really well and i don't have to make a trade because my teams are pretty solid um this is definitely gonna be the, one of the exceptions this year. um but the whole idea behind it i mean i do like it i do like what i this considering the circumstances that i was facing while i was kind of drafting in the car trying to figure things out actually work semi working um, when things were happening um definitely am okay with the way the thing is uh turned out i really like pastorisu as a b tier i really think that's, he's gonna be a little fun guy to play with um toxic i've used toxic before i'm very familiar with toxic 
Polion is one of the ones where I was just like, I never used Empoleon before. I like its new abilities. I like some of the movesets it gets. It kind of does balance out. Obviously, I'm not going to throw it out in the sun, but you know, it's going to be one of those things where it's going to be there to counter certain mons. Or if you're going to use rain against me, I'm bringing Napoleon in the rain. Um, you know, I got Diplin. He's going to be my little ace in the hole. When I saw he was there, slapping Eevee Light on that thing. I'm going to call him Diplin, Dip the Tank, because he's just not dying. Um, Sylveon's a good pick. Everyone remembers me and Sylveon from uh, two seasons ago. Tore, tore, tore everyone a new one. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm happy with my team. I think it. I think it definitely has some synergy issues. I won't. I will be the first one to say that because I am the one who likes to brag on it being synergized. But I'm gonna be real. Um, if you let me, my Tauros sit in the sun, uh, you're all you're dying. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. I mean, that's just kind of how how I feel about it. I like my Terrace as well. I think having that flying Terrace was very crucial as I realized the ground weakness I was going to be facing. Um, but yeah, I'll leave it up to you guys. Go ahead. <laughs> Go on, Nick. Jake, feel away. free. Oh, go on, then. I'll take it. Um, yeah, oh, it's it's hard because it's a lot of mons that I'm not familiar with. Um, Ting Lu, I believe that is def uh, d attack down, I believe. Special yes. attack down. Special attack, Special down. attack down. Okay. Um, so, kind of, you've got enough special bulk anyway. Um I mean, Sylveon's massive, Empoleon's massive, Diplin is... I mean, if you need a Diplin to be more tanky, there you go. Um, Pachirisu, probably one of the most valued B tiers out there. Um, I don't see... as Because your Empoleon's not weak to electric, um, there's not too much there, but you have got the Flying Terror. So, Flying Terror synergy with Pachirisu works perfectly fine. The sun, I think, is a little bit wasted. Um, granted, it is Tauros, but you've played in the sun before. You know what you're doing. Toxicroak, I believe it's there for fake out. Um, I prefer Medicham yeah. um, over the Toxicroak. I think that's one thing you could change. D tier, obviously, we know the shenanigans that you tried picking a Lapras that didn't exist. Um, Empoleon. Oh, I feel like that's, that's the slot where you could get some real synergy going. Something that's... Heavy defense, heavy offense. So you're taking advantage of the Ting Lu next to it. Um, I just, I, I get what you mean by countering like rain teams and stuff. And obviously competitive is really nice. It stops like the intimidate use. Um, but that's the slot for me. Massive fan of Sylveon, massive fan of Medicham. Huge power skill swap into any of these bad boys, mainly the Tauros. And you're away to the wind. Because um, if you do that, Nick, if you do that, Luke, Intimidate procs again. So if you skill swap in, you, it gets huge power and you get a second intimidate drop. Um, so <laughs> that's always a thing to be aware of. Um, overall, doesn't look good on paper, but I think it's going to play well. That's my kind of gist to it. I don't know if Nick's got any further suggestions on top of that. I, I feel like that doesn't look good on paper, but should play well. That? That kind of sounds quite accurate. So I'm, I'm going to be real with you, Luke. I don't love it. I don't think it's bad, right? Um, I just... I mean, Jake has kind of picked up the stuff that I, I'm looking at, which is the... Well, he, he's picked up one thing, the sun being wasted. You've got Tauros, but other than that, I'm not sure what it's doing. And if you can... If you can, like, illuminate t to that, I I'd be very interested. Not that you want to, like, spread all your, your plans and secrets around and whatnot like that. Um, but I do feel like Nine Tails, Nine Tails is weird here. Um, and the other one is... I I'm not sure... Okay, I'm, I'm a little torn on Tinglu. Okay. Ting Lu is great, okay? For the record, both Ninetales and Ting Lu, absolutely uh, great Pokemon. But I feel like the primary offense that you've got is Empoleon and Sylveon. Like, I think they're the ones with the highest, like, attack stats. Someone, you can correct me if I'm wrong here. Um, and with Ting Lu next to them, it's like, because they're both special, it's taking away from 
their yeah. damage output. It affects output. your side as well, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, this is kind of my, my concern. So it's a case of, I'm, I don't know where you're going with the sun, and I feel like Tinglu is potentially too much of a double-edged sword. Now that said, I think I, I like all the Pokemon individually. Right, and and you get huge points for that because there's not a single bad Pokemon on here. Like I know Jake said he's not sure about Toxic Rogue. Toxic Rogue is great. I I have tried running it before, and it's it's maybe a little awkward because it's a bit frail, but it can really put some damage out if um if you get it with the right moves against the right opponents. Uh, so yeah, Toxic Rogue is potentially very scary. Fake Out is obviously always good to have. Medicham, huge power, speaks for itself. And Polion, I think Empoleon now, with the buffs that it's had this season, is great. And Diplin, I don't know all the tools that it gets, but I know it's it's a tank, as you say, and like it, it has enough output on it that it will do what it wants to do. So the individual parts are there, but it's just the two main picks, Ting Lu and Ninetales, I'm looking at and I'm going, I don't get it. Um, Go on, yeah, please, tell please. Us. Tell us, we, enlighten we're us, because we're, we're fishing. <laughs> we're, fi we're throwing we the are, rod out. We are. We want your don't, strats. <laughs> don't, don't fish for me, boys. That Ting Lu's going to be the first thing gone. Once yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. Um, there we go. So, so here's what had happened was uh, your boy is uh, very, very, uh, he doesn't read really well. Um, as you can remember, I was like, how many hours back is the BST to EST? I don't know. I saw special defense drops or special attack drops, and I did not see for all Pokemon. Okay. 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 <laughs> so I did not realize that when I drafted it, and then when I was looking back at it, I was like, "Oh, fuck." <laughs> um, so I mean, really, what it boils down to is, yeah, the Suns wasted with this team. A to my the with what I plan on doing, I'm probably going to end up swapping out the Tingly for something that works better in the Sun. Hey, you know, you, you, you know what you want? You know what you want. You want a Chi Yu, which boosts and, special attack. Which was something I was going to reach out to you after this video. There'll be a conversation uh, after this, guys. There will I tell be. you what, that, that, we'll I tell totally you what improve Luke, it, Luke, but... If there's a Chi Yu in that, that is a nine. Yeah, yeah that, that's right? really what it, See, the thing is, I don't know. I haven't been on the competitive scene, so I don't know what shit does. I was literally like, Ting Lu's a fucking moose thing, dude. That thing's Chi cool as shit. Chi in the... Oh, bro. Chi Yu in the sun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that being <sighs> said, that was kind of the thing. I didn't know what was what. And then in the middle of the draft, I realized that I wanted Chi Yu. And then I saw it got taken. And I was like, oh, shit. All right, what do I pick for S? And I just kind of freaked out. I was like, I'm just going to go because I'm drafting my car. I'm not trying to change at the metal. Yeah. I'll figure it out on the fly. So, um, but yeah, overall, it's just like this team is meant to be running the sun with the expectation with Napoleon being there to counteract it. But even if it's not in the yeah. sun, it's still a Napoleon and it can do work in any situation. Terrifying. Um, and yeah. then, like you said, like you said, and, and huge, power huge power Metacham, huge power Metacham, fair. Patrice is a great, is the best thing in the world on B tier, in my opinion, is the best pick I could have made a B tier. And Toros is there as long as Ninetales is there. If Ninetales gets dropped for some reason, Taurus will be there for some backup, but yeah, the, mainly the Taurus is going to be. Taurus is insane. It's going to. Taurus it's, is great with or without Sun, man. Like, yeah, because, but in the Sun, like, that thing's killing everything. Yeah, yeah. Ninetales and out. Sylveon lack defense. That thing has Intimidate. Yeah. It brings the yeah, defenses back. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Range. So that's, I mean, that's the core right there. That core Ninetales Taurus right now is the core I'm going to be running for a while. So be prepared, guys. Yeah. Uh, so on, I, I think. With, with that said, you you got some good terrors as well. Uh, by the way, I you're the one that's been looking at the type charts. Is there any like glaring holes in the, your weaknesses? Just before I uh... glaring holes in the weakness, uh, glaring hole in ground, obviously minus three. It's right every now. team, that's why... it's every yeah. team. But I minus mean, but three, you... but you've got flying terror, so that's like... why I have that there to cover that up. The other mm -hmm. one, a uh, minus two to flying, um, but that's flying. That's flying. the fighting types. That's the fighting yeah. types. That's not that's too it. bad, to be honest with you. But with the, um, with the terrorists, it solves the issue. So, so yeah. okay, we, we 
most of the time, like while we may take the ability to trade up into consideration, we should be terror. We, we should be like scoring it on how it looks now. Okay. I and with, with that said, like it, it's the Pokemon are good, but the synergy right now is definitely questionable for that. I'm going to say a 6.5. Like, I'm just because the Pokemon are good themselves. I'm going five. I think it's bang okay. on average. It's it's a very average team. Once mm -hmm. the synergy goes up, it like, I mean, throw a Chiyu in there, it could probably go straight to a nine. But I think at the moment, it's 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 fighting against itself. <laughs> AKA against that Ting Lu. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing is, like, I'm looking at this and uh, um, I... I I could go lower, but I don't want to because I know that there's some scary stuff in there. Like, Sylveon alone is always a problem. <laughs> yeah. And then Sylveon finally... and Tauros can just, like, co combo their way through. So, like, yeah. But I, I think that, yeah, don't... don't you, you, you've a trade or two and, and this team's next level. Sorry, carry on. Luke. And then Sorry. finally, guys. Um... Wow. What a way to wheel pick. Go on, Luki. Hit us off. This is my favorite team. <laughs> um, Yeah, I, this team, it screams fucking Jack. It's all <laughs> like, that's the problem, right? Like, everyone knows a Jack team. When, you, when Jack's not running a Jack team, Jack doesn't do well. When Jack's running a Jack team, Jack does well. This team right off the gate is Jack and... By God, he got a fucking flutter main. So like, it's not as as like that's it. Like, I mean, there's nothing else to say here other than this fucking team is fat, pretty solid, fast. You better pray to God you got some special bulk on this bitch. And overall, this and this fucking tear is a steel fairy. What the fuck, bro? Like, it just <laughs> it's it's honestly, it's honestly a little unfair. You're going to have to prep hard for this team. There's a few mods that can definitely be taken out. I think definitely could be beneficial. I'm looking at the Inteleon, really. I really, that's the only question mark I have on this team um, because I was just never a fan of Inteleon to begin with. But I mean, his team, his picks are this. Fluttermane, Murkrow, uh, Sandy Shocks, Lucario, Thwacky, Furry Giraffe, Infernape, Inteleon, Perserker, Rotom Fan with the Steel and Fairy Terra. Like, bro, it's um, it's 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 it's, it's, too, it's really freaking good. It's, in my opinion, it's the best team we've seen. I'm in my opinion, we saved the best for last. In my opinion, um, as this is gonna be a pain in the ass to play, uh, I will be shocked to see if this team does not make it to semis or finals this year. And that's all I have to say on it. It's really, it's it's just too good. Go on, Nick. Um, so I'm. I know we're, we're talking and then scoring. I'm going to uh, start with my score. This is a ten. Um, ultimately, like, yeah, reluctant to give tens because it's like, well, this this could be better. That could be, but I I don't see a flaw. Like you mentioned, Intellion. It's like that to me is just that is a counter to the stuff that the rest of this uh, team might struggle against. Um, like it kind of maybe wants the sun a little bit or like maybe ground might be a bit of a problem versus some of the steel or something like and, and Teleon deals with the Pokemon that are going to potentially counteract that um, uh, Fluttermane is broken <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, there's a reason why it sees the last um, like score I saw was like 80% usage in VGC uh, he has Murkrow, which is prankster. I mean, I mean it's, it's a prankster man doing prankster things, but it holds Eviolite really well. Um, mm -hmm. th there is a question that both that and the Thwacky want Eviolite on this team, but Thwacky's a D tier. Like, it doesn't need to come. But while we're talking about it, Thwacky is a great D tier D pickup. Tier. It's mini I mean, Rillaboom. Grassy seed right? alone on this thing will fix a couple yeah. of his problems. Uh, Absolutely. And I'm pretty sure it's acrobatics, so... Yeah, but I mean, like, Berserker 
right? With Steely Spirit or whatever it's called. And then he has Steel Terror. Yep. Right? Literally any Pokemon can be placed next to Berserker. Go Terror Steel Blast. Terror, Terror Blast. Right? Fluttermane kicking out like stupid power steel moves while it's also got Moon Blast on it or whatever you want to run. Busted, man! Like, I'm, I'm like, I don't see it for Rigorath to counter the, um, uh, the priority. priority stuff, which is the only thing which outspeeds Flutter, really. Like, you've got Terrain. You don't have Weathers, but you've got a Prankstamon that can do the Weathers for you. Like, no, this is, hands down, this is a 10. And um, anyone that beats this is, like, going to be playing out of their mind to do so. So I'm going to be a little controversial, but not controversial like by much um <laughs> so jack obviously built upon the core that he had to play against every week last season because he preps with me so flutter main murkrow for rigoraf um he i kind of told him to pick for rigoraf during draft day because as soon as you pick flutter main the, the, the one reluctant thing he has he's told me flutter main chi Yu was available um and he could have still done a lot of this with Fluttermane Chi Yu. Um, granted, that being said, he has got Berserker, which can do the same thing, which is a bit cheaper on terms of the steel size. My, my, main, my main gripe with this is a bit of bulk. Um, just a little bit, not a lot. It's like it's not lacking a lot, but like the, the Murkrow can't do screens, um, but the Ferrigarath can. So it's like, it's still that I'm, I'm trying to pick at straws, guys. Um, <laughs> It's, I can tell, I can tell. Um, but yeah, Fluttermain, Murkrow, Ferrigaraf always come every game. We all know that Fluttermain is a wing con. I mean, if you can maybe get Trick Room off against this team, it's kind of good. He's just got to turn it back off with Ferrigaraf, though. Sandy, it, it, works in both rain, it works in both Rain and Sun. I think it prefers the Sun. Two Proto Boosts on Sandy Shocks and Fluttermain. Um, plus Infernape in the Sun. Want to run it in rain? Well, we've got Berserker, Lucario, um, Bullet Punch, Inteleon, Snipe Shot Crits in the rain, plus Fwacky uh, with Grassy Terrain. Fluttermane, again, just doing bits. We just know Fluttermane's a wing con. Um, I think Rotom Fan gets Thunder. It's like to Stab Thunder. Yeah, there's not many weaknesses to this, and I really, like, his first game's tiny, and I've done some prep with Jack. <laughs> it's rough. It's rough. It's it's a 9.5. It's a 9.5 just because I think it, it, it's the tiniest amount of bulk that it could pick up somewhere else. It would maybe... I think Jack's identified itself, him, it himself. It might be that he swaps Infernape and Inteleon for like a Milotic and a Typhlosion. That would be a little bit better, but I don't think it's required. I think... I, I'm, I'd be super happy with Infernape Inteleon. I used Inteleon in Fast Draft and that thing ripped, man. That thing ripped so hard. And the fact that you can't redirect it as well. Just start pinning things with Fluttermane D-Gleam and then just snipe-shotting stuff. It's like... I I think e even just something like picking up an Intimidate user or something like that might be... Um, Beneficial somewhere. Yeah, but I... While... <sighs> I, I get your point that maybe there's some improvements or something like that. It does not detract from what this team already is. You know, and those Pokemon you're talking about him trading out, it's like they still hit like a ton of bricks. Inteleon and Infernape have a lot of offensive pressure on them. They're not slow. Like, they're good. They've got tools. Like, for me, the Rotom fan is questionable just because I don't like it. But I, I don't think it matters. Um, it really doesn't. So, like, like feather yeah. dance on the Murkrow. So yeah, we rounded it off at the end. What's that? A ten, a ten, and a nine point five. Uh, oh, well, I... Luke hasn't given a score. Go on, yeah, Luke. it's nine point. It's I will never give a ten to anything. There's no perfect team out here. It's a nine point five. Fair, fair. <laughs> um. So yeah, that was it. That's power rankings, guys. Um. I hope you enjoyed. Let us know. Uh, very, what very you... quickly. Oh, do we? Do we want to just run through the order of them? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Nick's got the averages, so yeah, let's ping yeah, those across. Yeah, I've been whacking them in as we've been going. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll just I'll read out from worst to, to best, um, 
and just know that whatever the final score none of this is a, a bad reflection on you because half of the time we were giving um lower scores we were saying they're easily tradable up and to be fair i will say everything is above a five and if five is average that means yes. that everything is above average okay yeah. don't think of five as being bad five is average okay and so many people like get upset about that because they think seven should be average or something no okay yeah. so <clears throat> guys don't don't for, for just before we announce the list of guys literally do not take stock in these power rankings we are doing this for fun because you guys asked on ask us for at the end of the day guys go out there have fun with the team she drafted make some changes you know don't graze in this don't don't just because i gave you a six or jake gave you a four does not mean jack shit it should not mean jack shit <laughs> maybe it should mean that you should definitely like look into making some changes maybe you know but like at the end of the day if you love your team and you're happy with your team go out there have fun and enjoy season five guys yeah, yeah. ultimately we are not experts either okay so with that said um in 12th place we have the philadelphia golden goes no surprise they didn't draft half of their team yeah. um 5.33 okay uh next in joint 10th we have at least i think i haven't ordered these uh <laughs> we have myself blackthorn city bear Ticks, and Luke, Norfolk Noctiles. <laughs> yeah! Make it so that see... we're, we're always next to each other, no matter where we are. We, we're the ones passing out all of this uh, judgment, and yet we don't know what the hell we're doing ourselves. Um, uh, with 5.75. Uh, <laughs> right, okay. Next up, we have the... Azalea Town Slowpokes with 6.83. So we're already nearly up to seven, okay? Um, and they weren't there to draft it themselves, so it's no surprise that they're slightly on the lowest end, um, but they're in ninth. In eighth, uh, in fact, no, it's not eighth, it's joint seventh. We have the Chicago Crocodiles. <laughs> and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with with Jake doing your dirty there, Dark Evious. Um and Raz with the Traverse City Tour Terrors on uh just seven. Um solid score. Um but yeah. We then have in what did I say that was eighth? So yeah. seventh place we have Phoenix with the Pembroke Palafins, uh seven point three three. Because we don't know what then, you're doing with it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just you. You watch. She's gonna prove us all wrong. I'm sure. Um, we then have Jake uh, Huddersfield High Dragons. Uh, Jake, you got a seven point five. Um, nice. Take that. So yeah, that'll put you in sixth place. So hey, you're in the top half. Um, <laughs> in fifth place. Is it fifth? I imagine no, you're going to have a lot of joints now because it's Yeah, like... it's joint fourth place. Uh, we've got the Vermilion City Victinis and the Obsidian Cleavors, uh, mm -hmm. both on eight. So, real sc solid scores for you guys. In third place, we have the Chicago Cub Foos with 8.83. Jesus. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> in second place, we have. Where's it gone? Wait, no. I imagine that's. Yeah, I've done that wrong. That's second place. I so, whatever say... place I said before, bump everything up. But I think I did joint fourth or something, and it should have been yes, joint, joint third. third. So, yeah, yeah. Second, yeah. Um, Toby. That's it. And then so top. Second, Toby. And then top. I mean, no surprise, we're looking at the score on our screen right now. The West Yorkshire Wiglets with a 9.67. Absolutely bonkers team. Um, so yeah, there's your rundown. Um, I, I don't think there's a bad team out there. Let's just make this clear. There is not a single bad team out there. Uh, and it's going to be a hell of a season. It's going to be fun. That being said, 
Um, I hope you guys enjoyed power rankings. Um, they are always a long video. This one is going to be even longer because I have to edit it. Um, but no, it will be up at some point soon. You won't know, but it's going to be up some <laughs> some point. Um, but yeah, we'll catch you all in the next one. It probably won't be commentaries, so just tune into everyone's stream because we're all recording anyway. Um, but bye bye. Bye. <laughs>